that's higher rank than you kind of inspires you to like all right you 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 want to you want to push yourself to be where they are and that's right. kind of what i've been doing recently there are there are yeah. people like that for you since this is your first time being on a collegiate team do you have any advice to people who may be looking to join a team or aren't sure if they should or not I say just go for it. When I saw the poster in the school, I was like, maybe they have like, you know, Valorant team, whatever. At the time, I was, I kind of doubted my ability, right? I kind of doubted my ability because like I was a low rank. I know I could hold my own in the game, but I didn't know how I would like compare. But I think you just have to go for it because if you don't, how would you know if you don't go for it? Would you say that the people on your team helped you out? Yeah, for sure. I think people who are higher ranked than you, like they... They teach you. You you obviously learn on your own, but there's a lot of things that you can get that you, you can get taught from your teammates and just how they how they play. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this with me. I really appreciate it. And there's so many other jobs as well that That's can right. translate out of this experience in esports. the The only path is not just as a player. Um, I think all of us are representative of jobs in esports, but it, it it mirrors traditional sports in pretty much the same way. You've got you know broadcasters, you've got production people, you've got marketing and sales, and um, now nil and and things like that. But um, really, esports is kind of a great accelerator accelerator uh, for a lot of new businesses that are coming up in the metaverse and Web three and there's a lot of new technology that is going to be needed. And so these, these STEM students. Hello, ladies, gents, and non-binaries. Welcome to Esports U. Of course, welcome back. If you aren't new to the stream, we are here for some collegiate Valorant action between Missouri Baptist University and RPI Valorant red i am your caster because i'm the only one on the screen and i'm the only one here at the moment but do not worry we will have our second caster alongside me secret it's a secret for the next map which is a scent but you know talking about both of these teams before we go ahead into those map pick and bands and also the agent select for our very first map of tonight both of these teams are three in one on the standings both set in that 19th place spot of course four games have been played but this will be the fifth for both of these teams now heading into the map pick and bands of course it shouldn't really be a surprise as to the trifecta of maps that we do have bind is a little bit of a surprise because icebox is a little bit more common than bind any competitive map pool whether it be for collegiate or whether it be outside collegiate but we do have haven ascent and buying is our three maps for today. Of course, Breeze and Pearl being banned out early. Um, I'm surprised that Breeze was banned out this early, but regardless, that was Missouri Baptist University's ban. RPI decided to ban out that Pearl, then Fracture, then Icebox, and then we get that decider map in Bind. If it does go that far and if we don't have a quick 2-0, like we have been throughout the whole ECAC for at least this season. So first map is Haven. And it's a pretty basic map, or not really basic, it's a three-site map. And there's a lot of different ways that you can attack it, but for defense, it can be a hell in a cell for them because of how complicated it is to defend those three sites because you're stuck having to over-rotate, um, expend your utility between all three sites and be very balanced with how you want to defend all three of them. Because if you lack an attention on one site, the attackers will just overrun it, take that space, then plant the spike. and the post plant is very easy to play on Haven, so there's that as well. But it looks like we will have our agent select. You guys won't see it on the screen. It will be happening in the background. Our next map is Ascent. It's not too surprising to see that map in a map pool. It's very popular within the whole of competitive play, not even just collegiate. But find is going to be the last map, potentially, if we do get there. And I'm expecting if we do get to bind. I'm expecting there to be some surprising place. Now, won't get to see the agents like because I won't get to see it quite yet. But I expect more of the same, right? Like your controllers usually are the Omen or the Astro because Astro's found her way back into the middle. Of course, Fade is also a common pick on Haven with the amount of corners 
And because of how small the sites are, her nightfall can cover a lot of ground on this map. And, be- and since her release back in, well, I'm not even going to remember the month. I don't remember the month, but back a couple of months ago, she's been a lot more common in today's meta than Sobahesh. Of course, she's t- overtaken that main initiator role alongside Breach on this map of Haven. And then um, your duelist is a toss up nowadays between Reyna, Jet, and Ray. A lot of people prefer Ray's more just because we're sitting on like Kit. A lot of people prefer Jet as well because of her ability to just dash inside a site and her ability to smoke as well. Her smokes can pr- prove useful for the defense as well as um, Ray's utility for the defense as well. Whereas Reyna, her Lyra got a buff a couple weeks ago where it doesn't have any range restrictions. So the operators that are so powerful on Haven won't be as powerful any more because of the Lear ability to cut off those lines of sight so much more easily. Hmm. But. Hi, this hey, what's is a special going on? guest. Yeah. What is going on? So I do believe we got through the map select. Is that correct? Yeah, map select. We got Haven, Ascent, and then Bind is our decider. Okay, okay, okay. So I can give you a little bit of info on this Missouri Baptist team. That mm. is actually where I came from. I went there for two years. I played with this roster. Uh, it's a little bit different this year going through. Uh, like two people graduated, so they're bringing in two new people. Uh, which is Hidden Worlds, their female player, and then somebody else. And then will come to me later. I'm sure of that. But I can't tell you this roster just played what was uh, Laclede's land in St. Louis this weekend. Won the land. So they're coming off a land win here into week five. That's big, if you ask me. Yeah, I think that's big. You know, a lot of teams coming off of land wins, usually at least for like the professional scene, some teams, if they do come off of land wins, they get through like like a period where they kind of like, like have a downside to them because you know they just mm-hmm. got off a win they take like some weeks off because they just got off a big land win and mm-hmm. then it, they can get a little bit sloppy against the teams that they can oh. look up against like months later so hopefully that's not the same case for missouri baptist university and not only are they taking you know this match seriously um mm-hmm. but they come into this game with a high from their land win yeah absolutely that's a that's such a big thing right like you get that ego from the land win suddenly you're making some mistakes. It's a hundred percent factor for them. They've had an interesting early season, I'd say, like uh, two and three right now. So trying to make that bout to get two players in the first place is going to make things interesting for them. Uh, going up against a roster that has looked pretty solid throughout this season, but that that momentum, I don't know. You snowball a little bit. I will say though that uh, Ella Cleedsland is a charity event and usually ends up being a lighter skill level competition so i think going into that land they were number one seed like by a pretty decent margin so that that's always a false in the confidence as you mentioned mm, yeah i've seen it as well and like uh another esports title um siege where like the team who won the last major just started to kind of like they're doing pretty good i think they're going to qualify for the next major but even then they started the season um pretty roughly losing against mm. teams that they should most definitely be winning against because again they have that ego they have that high. They took a couple weeks off because, again, when you win a title, you don't need to overpractice or overcompensate because that's how you get burnout real easily. And a lot of teams know this, so they just take a week, sure. they take a couple weeks off. Maybe they take a month off, off a world championship win, and they just come back and they're maybe just a little bit sloppy. But you know, sure. hopefully that's not the case. Like I said, for Missouri Baptist University, I did talk a little bit about the first map of Haven. Of course, Haven ascent and bind. Not really the trifecta. It would have been a trifecta if Icebox were the decider map. But um, Haven, Agent Slick, we won't get to see it just yet. But, I mean, Astra, Omen, especially with Astra being nerfed a while back, her being kind of pushed out of the meta, not really by Viper because she was, she was always going to stay consistently yeah. good. But Omen and Brim kind of overtaking her yeah. spot as a main controller on maps like Haven and Ascent. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I think especially in Collegiate, we get teams playing that versatile execute. So they want to play Brim, they want to play Omen to have that uh, extra offensive utility. Rasta's going to have that more mid map control, but you really have to have that team play to play together with it. But speaking of playing, uh, we got a little bit of issue with the balance servers right now. So game not playing just yet. 
for a quick break and hopefully the game's ready when we get back. Esports athletes are really the, the future workforce and leaders of tomorrow. And, you know, us as well as all of our brand partners that we work with really recognize this. And I think that's really, you know, a key driver of why brands are in this space. They want to be part of building that future workforce and leadership and shaping it and supporting it. So, yeah, it's, 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 very, it's been a very interesting space to watch. And we, we offer such a big, uh, you know, we offer such a big counterpart to traditional sports also because when tra it's a counterpart, but it's also the same is what I'm trying to say. Because it, it, when you're traditional sports and they're done after their two-a-day workout and they're done after their practice scrim, they're coming home to play Call of Duty and relax and put their feet up and get a drink and play video games. It grows their brain, problem-solving skills, uh, and, and their hand-eye coordination while they're home. Hand-eye coordination, if you're a football player, massive skill. Massive skill. So mm -hmm. um, it helps build those things while they're off the field. And then for us, vice versa, if you're an esports athlete, one of the th errors I had growing up when I was competing in esports is that I was not active enough. I, I played sports, I competed a little bit, but I wasn't active enough truly when I look at it. So that's one area that esports players can learn from in terms of activity and physical and the marrying of both. People say, oh, sports and esports, video games. Not really. We're just kind of the tech industry's competitive uh, form of um, competition as to where traditional sports are more physical hands-on. So I believe in the marrying of these two sectors and that they actually live together while also being counterparts. Well, I think, I think then to speak to something about marrying, right, from traditional to esports, um, that to me speaks to this whole new thing, at least, again, from you guys, right, you guys have more traditional sports background, right, Paul, Lee, Mike, um, and all that, but I think let's talk NIL then, because I think that's something that I think is really interesting. That at least when I heard about it, right, of what we're trying to do with, you know, esports athletes, schools, programs in general, um, because it wasn't something you would think normally, right? You could understand, right, football player on the field, star quarterback, it makes sense, right? The guy is somebody that everybody knows on campus, whether you're, you know, whether you're on the team, off the team, or you're just going to the school, it makes sense. But I think you know nowadays. It's, it's not as common or people don't think that they could be somebody that their name is out there, right? Or that they know they're known, right? As, as we're growing the space, as we're, we're putting this together, it almost feels really interesting that, you know, star, your star entry, you know, your star entry in Valorant or your, your star forward on Rocket League, right? Whatever the case might be, now they can have NIL deals. It's a, it's a thing out yeah. there. And, and I think, I don't know, maybe Mike, you want to start off? But yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, thank you for teeing that up. So uh, I was talking for too long. I, uh, I forgot to bring NIL into the mix. So it's a common occurrence, uh, occupational hazard. So I would say that, uh, so NIL for, for uh, I'm sure most of you watching understand what it is, but NIL stands for name, image, and likeness. Name, image, and likeness, that term has been utilized to describe the transition of traditional student athletes, NCAA athletes, and their ability to monetize their name, image, and likeness. It went live July 1st, 20 of 21, and it has continued over the course of the last 14, nearly 14 months now. Uh, it's an interesting term because it's been co-opted to describe the NCAA's approach to student athletes being able to make endorsement money or uh, be able to monetize any part of their name, image, and likeness, but it's been around forever, right? We've had athletes endorsing brands for over a hundred years. Babe Ruth of the New York Yankees was endorsing brands a hundred years ago, and it has continued onward from baseball cards all the way through now, where we have lots of different integrations of how uh, influencers can monetize their followings. So what I would say on the traditional side is it's still a very young space. There are a lot of stories out there regarding NIL that tend to focus on the negative or how out of control, I put in air quotes, it has gotten. But there is still a burgeoning marketplace for many more student athletes that are involved. About 17% of NCAA athletes are currently involved in NIL, but 65% more than that want to get involved and are curious how to get started. On the flip side, brands are challenged with a few different things in the space. There are 10,000 professional athletes in the United States. Once July 1st, 2021 hit, and you dump every NCAA athlete into that space, that's another half a million. 
So brands that maybe didn't have a dedicated Welcome back, everybody, to Esports YouTube. It sounds like we got our issues resolved. So momentarily, we jump in and select for this first map. It's going to be Haven. And so we're having a pretty nice conversation about agents going into the map, specifically controllers. I got to ask you, when it comes to those controllers, those aggressive options, that Brimstone with the Stim Beacon, that Omen with the Paranoia, or that Asher with full map presence, what do you prefer to see compositionally? Um, I don't know. It's a, I don't really like the Brimstone on Haven that much. I Yeah. I would prefer either an Omen or Astra as I kind of like center myself because my camera's kind of like cricket. It's kind of weird. But like, I would prefer either the Omen or Astra. With Omen, he, again, he does have that menacing presence with the paranoia, but he can also mm -hmm. teleport on to like the more vertical, heavy positions that exist on Haven. There's a lot, especially with the crates on all of yeah. the sites. Um, Yeah, on all of the sites, I had to think about it for a moment. Also, his ultimate can become quite useful in those clutch situations, especially if you're in True. a 1vx, you know that most of the enemy team is on one site and you're just trying to rotate to the other really quickly in order to get that spike down. True. Of course, you can't you can't really argue against the Astra neither, but we won't be seeing the Astra. It's going to be uh, full omen for either team. Yeah, full omen's gonna come out. We got the fake KO still from RPI. It's been a Long time coming for fake KO, originally started on Ascent. Haven't seen it much on Haven lately. I've been seeing mm -hmm. that Breach fade come in instead for that like Rolling Thunder, that extra retake ultimate, but that's not going to be the case here. And MBU hitting us with an interesting composition. They've got what is that Sova coming back in. Now, Suga, when's the last time you saw someone play a Sova? I, it's not been that long. Um, I really? just don't see him on Haven. I mean, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I think fade has most definitely knocked him out of contention for... Mm maps with uh, a lot of tight corners like haven and he just isn't really he doesn't really come into mind when you're looking at maps like vine yeah. now haven or even in some instances even icebox at times yeah 100 i think the only real place where i can see the sova getting to come out to play is ascent because i mean he's been there forever and it makes that wallbang on b so much easier the haunt's just not as reliable as the dart is but I don't know. We'll see. I'm always a strong believer that regardless of what your composition is, regardless of how close or far from the meta, as long as you know how to play it, things are okay. So we'll True. see. I can't tell you for a fact that uh, Kenichi Wano has been playing Sova for pretty much his entire collegiate career. Mm. Well, we'll get to see it here on Haven, and we'll get to see it size up against the Fade, so it's perfect for today's matchup because... A lot is on the not really on the line here because it's still early pickings in the seasons. It's both teams three and one, both teams in tied in the 19th place spot along with many other teams because it is so early in the season. Of course, you know those early standings are going to be very very tight. But well, who's going to get their second loss of the season? Is going to get their fourth win? Well, we'll find out in about a couple of hours, maybe depending on how long this goes. <laughs> Ah, uh, we'll see, we'll see. If we get that map three, we could be in for a wild ride. Both these teams having lost last week. Who's got the confidence to come back in? Is it MVU, the recent land winners? Or is it RPI to play spoiler to what was the hype? We'll find out. It's the spawn walls drop now. Mm, Howler going in to clear that sewers position and also the guiding light to provide some extra zoning for the defense to push them back. But also most of the attention is turned over to this A long position. That knife going to be very good in spotting out the position of the jet and she can't dash away even if she wanted to. But regardless of that, it looks like the spike is going elsewhere. So deep down sewers and still on that contact. They'll finally get that trade back, but look how many players for MBU tagged up. Trevi from MTG so early down into B. Not done on the angle just yet, forced away. Thanks to what is going to be those swarm grenades from the killjoy. So RPI are into the site, but it's B. It's the easier retake option. It'll be looks from both links. Well, retake going to come in. The dog wolf going to spot out the position of Moses in that back site. Yeah, nice dog to stun him. Even though Moses wasn't stunning that gunfight, it did throw him off just a little bit. He wasn't expecting the immediate push in. That light missing, and so he does get to push through the smoke. But even then, regardless of that, he gets shut down as he tries to push in even though the light missed there was a lot of bodies to find inside of that site well and there's a lot of crossfires as well that mb were yeah. establishing too so it's very hard to clutch in that position yeah that extra player 
Holding that dark cover definitely makes a difference there. That uh, guiding light goes down past the dark cover diggy plane inside of it. Yeah. Trying to make a play towards the side. And that's the difference, man. You got the extra players alive as long as everybody is being vigilant. You got somebody aware of every angle. Those scenarios get shut down rather quickly, just like that. So, MBU, they've got themselves a pistol after was a shaky look down sewer. I don't think RPI plays that deep into A again because of how much contact was there. Mm. Let's see. Ash goes out again towards the sewer's position. And RPI having the better gun, or not having the better gun, sorry, that should be MBU because they won that first round. Oh. And it is Kanichi to get the first kill, but Meepy on the ghost can't find the second. Ooh. Kanichi finds the second with the Spectre with how accurate it is. He is going to be very aggressive in pushing against the pistols of RPI who are just mainly stuck in mid and in their own spawns. He's going to take all the space now on the outside. 3k for their troubles looking to grab the ace into this round in the world's gonna steal that one away there's that further look mendingo holding on clinging for dear life and trevi's gonna shut it all down the specter start the round and to end it as well it's a 2 for mbu they got themselves four smgs going into their bonus round and rpi struggling to find a default just yet yeah, it's gonna take a while to warm up to the attacks here on Haven, especially with the type of retake situation that we saw from MBU being so electric and also just using their utility with the sky to fruition. Now we get to see them buy full weapons. And usually I don't like to judge a book by its cover in the first two to three rounds. You'll get to see the game fully kind of come into itself once we get into those gun rounds for both teams. If he's walking all the way down C long, so we'll have this space early. We'll give early information to MBU about the default to be seen. Orbs taken. Just attempting to play in this dark cover. Nothing to be seen just yet. Far defensive stack that's happening on a C right now. Remember, they are playing their bonus, so they're going to have that limited util, so it does make sense. You'd be down C long, C nothing, so you know. No one in the C direction. You think you'd move a player off C just yet? The rotate's taking a bit of time, though, from MBU. Yeah. Trying to figure out which site is the best. And it seems like they spotted out the A site, but they haven't spotted out the chamber oh, with the haunt ability that I believe just went into the middle of B. He gets two with the headhunter for free, one with the headshot, as you would expect, but the other with the body shot and is completely mm. throwing this attack off guard or off point. Yeah, absolutely oh, off. This Trevi now coming around the back oh, end on the no. off thing. We'll grab two. Hambringer a 3k. Isn't that Marshall on the site? It's a flawless bonus round picked up from MBU. They'll take all the rifles, the spoilers of the war. They're up 3 0. That walk down C long gives such early information. They finally start their rotation and RPI says so they've got no space down and towards eight. Do what was early sewers pressure and what was the pistol round? Was that default so slow? The only option they feel like they have is B. We know how easy a B site retake is, especially when Handbringer's grabbing the first two frags before they even touch that site. Yeah. Another important thing is I believe a haunt came in from RPI and I, I think it was a misplaced haunt because it didn't spot out the position of Hamburg of Hamburger who was in the middle of who was in the back of B. Sometimes you would usually clear the back of B site if you're going to push it. And the same thing applies to A, the same thing applies to C, but at least well, they get the first pick inside of this round. It's with the Marshall, they are on a save. So their weapons are considerably weaker than MBUs. Oh, they're still looking for everything down here. He's going to find it. Trevi's got one out garage as well. It's two early picks. There'll be one trade down towards long, though. Rensselaer. Still. Works towards grass. Works towards garage. It's all the space they have is towards the B site. Mm. Well, it looks like, for the most part, it's a man advantage in favor of MBU. RPI, or I'm so sorry, Diggy. In the back of B, find some space. Going to use a nano swarm in order to push the, the defender back mm. here. But I don't know if he wanted to throw it there, maybe closer to the link area. He gets opt. And yeah, well, that's comical to say the least. Now we get to see the A site push. It. He gets another one from the A link oh, area. Big dog. Whips the dart shot. A full known about back of site. Kvichi has that one any day of the week, aren't you? A full. Oral for MBU, yeah, <laughs> a bit of a comical off shot for sure. Walk straight into the headshot. I do kind of like that play though, of trying to use that swarm grenade to give you extra room towards CT, so you can peek yeah. towards what is that A angle just in case they are playing two players in that location. But it just does not work out. Yeah, I don't know. He was setting that up for like the the CT uh, and get split push. As we see that shot again. 
I'm a from Chilla. It doesn't seem like RPI. Just they don't, they don't really have the energy, or not one. energy. Sorry, the information oh, area to really the push dogs. these sites as effectively the as they would shot. want yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. And, about back and so you have to look at the fade. You have to look at the KO picks and say, well, you know, with the early knives, with the early. Well, mainly with the early knives, are we really getting as much from it as we would want? Because it's not like MBU are aggressing early on. They're not. Right. They're waiting. So maybe save those knives and adjust to what MBU are actually doing. Yeah, I was going to say MBU is feeling out these longer angles first. You see there from Kanichi. Fortunately, he is going to get tagged up. I can see long in that one. But Take once again, still alive, still chilling, and all this util now to use to stall what is this actual push coming from RPI and RPI is struggling to find that default, struggling to find a way to effectively use Standing utility in. to clear early angles. Oh, the start should give him for the for players to rotate back. Ooh. Oh, it's shot, maybe not. Shot a tough have... read. Yeah. Again, RPI is taking a bit longer to really find a way to clear these sites. They push into sewers with no information. There goes Trevi with two. I mean, <laughs> how the hell does he get that against the two initiators on RPI? I don't know. But at least they have control of the A site. They're going to smoke out the heaven and the link positions as you would expect. And now it's time for MBU to maybe do go for a retake. But they have the numbers. Yeah, they got the numbers now thanks to what is a miraculous second frag from Trevi there out towards sewer. You're going to wait for this util. This one should come through pretty well together. So you got one sky flash to work off of, and that's, it's out now. That paranoid is fantastic from Ronta Jade. It's between the back of the side to pick up one. We just split trade one back, though, from Heaven with that operator. And Kanichi now to get involved down towards hell. Ronta Jade, oh, no, he he needs an ace to win it, and Mipi Chilla will pick it up from Heaven. Never moved off the position, never needed to. The aerial support in that fight is picked up, too, for the retake. That'll be the fifth round secured for MBU, and that's five rounds straight. I think. That paranoia was like really good at initiating that swing from the omen on the side of RPI. He just couldn't find a way to confirm the second kill from the second player who was also nearsighted as well. And it's going to be a timeout for RPI to figure out, well, what exactly is going on here? That last round, though, again, was just a really good retake from MBU. They knew they had the numbers and they just overwhelmed the, the few players that from RPI who didn't really have the proper post plant positions on that actual a site on that plant mm. and so now well they're gonna try and figure out what needs to be fixed yeah, this is a hard time out to really walk into because oh yeah i'd say they play that round pretty well together i mean mbu you're yeah. kind of they're reading very confidently and really trusting the call of location like they really do trust the fact that they think rpi is playing to see there i mean they four stack c to be able to instantly retake it ends up going towards A anyway. The only thing is, even though they four stack, they push their omen all the way through sewer. So they have that containment and they have the info of if there are players towards A or not. The omen's going to have that so quickly. And then, of course, has smokes to get themselves out if they need to. Instead, they look for one. They get the second look. And you can see that in that look, there's a player long. Trevi doesn't even check towards long due to the fact that they're so confident that they are playing towards C. But the fact that he gets two picks is in the numbers advantage early. And because they're stacking sites, even though they are in the wrong site positionally, They've got those four players to retake, and they've got all the util left since no one has to use anything over towards C. Yeah. Again, he's the only, he does have the paranoia and the smoke abilities, like you mentioned. He does have that stall potential, too, to, for his teammates to get back onto site yep. with him, if need be. Now we get to see the smokes come in again. I believe that was a smoke from the attackers. I saw it yep. burn red. So now we get to see the dash from the jet, the aggression coming into site. The, they knew he was back here because they knifed it as well. He gets two, and now. A full sight rush into C somehow turns into a 1v3 in MBU's favor. Granted, it is RPI on a, well, sort of save round, sort of force. And it is FSD to fall last. C's got the reads, man. MBU yeah. ready for that one. <laughs> Three stack towards C. And you start to run the options. This team, RPI, their late round option is B if they have no other answers. They can typically get that scaling up towards grass. They touch A early or they don't touch it at all. They try to scale their way up towards C. So they lose a round over towards A, take a timeout. MVU takes the hard read. This team's coming C, I promise you. They stack the extra player and well, correct are they ever. Ready for that one, secured it. And once again, it's the Yoma to Trevi with a nice 2K off a of platform. Give them that numbers advantage. 
Trev being so sneaky and he, he, he finds himself, even when he was detected or his presence was detected by the knife because it doesn't give you an exact thing. Even though his presence was, det was detected, he was still as sneaky and silky as ever. And he finds the first mm. pick. Speaking of first pick, the sky falls early. And you know how crucial the sky has been for MBU on their retakes when they do lose sight. And Spike is over by a MBU rotating off of that, potentially mm. looking over towards B, thinking that RPI are going to rotate there. Like they have been for the last few rounds, but there goes the null command to say otherwise. And there goes the smokes as well to confirm that A is the site for RPI. That's what I'm saying. The MVU have been so prone to the rotate, just really trusting the IGL and the reads. The sentences where they're wrong. They've been wrong before, but they have that extra firepower that they could retake anyway, even though that call initially was wrong. Ooh. This time, they're not going to have that. They've got a tag at least onto the graffiti player of the Omen. They've got so much work to do when they're down a whole member here in this once they try to work their way out towards CT. Oh, there goes the turret to spot out the position in a link, but there wow. goes three kills in MBU's favor. They're just One winning all of their gunfights, but actually, no, they did win all of their gunfights at the end there. Trevi with the 2k, the nice little violin being played from KO. On the, I think that is the KO's hands. I think it is. It, or, or the Omens. I don't know. Everybody has very distinct hands in this game, and I still can't tell which hands are whose, so... But nice, I like that little spray. I like that little tag. It's nice. That's cute. That's a, that's a cute play. As the, cat, he the, the cat is cuter. Though. The cat is cuter. Well, I, said, I, have, I, have the cat I got tag. cat in my tag, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and agree with you. Fair enough. Cats are just cute in general. That's what I'm saying. Way better than dogs. That, well, I don't know. I think they're same and same. I like I like both. Okay, okay, okay. I'll take that. I'll take yeah. that. Quick scale up A site again. This one's coming through on what is a light bite from RPI. So they want to play fast. They want to get to site. So you can respect the decision. Lockdown's got to go down to make that possible. She's going to see if they can grab something on the initial cross. There's no smoke to heaven just yet. So it might be an opportunity. They actually got a gap towards heaven. So they'll be chilling. They've got a little off angle. A chance to make something possible here. The Omen's T feet away towards sites. That's all five there for RPI. We'll see if she's able to make a play here. It's picked up one towards heaven. Oh, on TJ. T feet up and well caught out. RTJ aggressing through his own smoke. I feel like I, I don't really like that play because I feel you you should know that if you're gonna play through your smokes like that, that somebody's all, always gonna be positioned on CT wow. ready for the retake. That's a nice shock dart, by the way. Nice is over. Mm -hmm. Like you're gonna pick up one on the rear. Three K for Kanichi and he'll waterfall down and take Moses on the drop. Kanichi coming straight into hell. Like he's Lil Nas in the Montero music video. It's 8-0. I like that. Again, I feel like the reason why RPI were put in such aggressive positions like that, and you know, they lost their gunfights because of it. Again, save round sort of stingers, I believe, in the hands of Auntie J. That's why, and not Auntie J, sorry. In the hands of um, whoever that was that pushed up, that advanced. I think it was FSD in a link. I have a terrible memory, but even then, regardless of that, at least they're able to pull by in this Teleport round. Sword. They have, I believe, not the lockdown available, but they do have an ultimate available. Even I think that was the face down, of an ultimate, but now she's dead. Mm -hmm. So maybe not, but, or she at least won't get to use it in that round. And of course, we know we talked about the um, ultimate ability from both Breach and Fade and how they can both clear sights, but Auntie J with two picks of his own Again, they're testing their middle through mid, but they're gonna make the rotate to A this time. So they're adjusting their pushes, but MBU are just so perfect on the retakes that it's very hard yeah. for them to find a way back. But maybe not so much because the HP is in their favor. So yeah, the HP's been in their favor before. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. So as the player counts, this time it'll be even on this one. Say MVU have been able to play so passively on sight holds because their retake has been immaculate. See, this is the same case. Two dark covers yeah. out. Paranoia out early. There's plenty of time to wait this near sight and get back into it. We'll have one look from heaven. They have info on Auntie J towards hell. This is where that dark cover just came from locationally. And they've got this player isolated. Both well, has picked last up one early. Handbringer on his way out. Last player alive. Even falls early. And finally, the post plant from RPI is successful. 
They've got their first round on the board here in round nine. There goes around where we see RPI kind of like just a little bit. They've expected the retake. They know that MBU are going to give them sight. And so mm. they're ready to make at least some aggressive plays through mid or aggressive plays early because they're still trying to go for aggressive plays even though MBU aren't aggressing first. But regardless of that, they go into A site. They keep their composure in a post plant. They're just holding the crosses, waiting for MBU to come to them. Because eventually they will. They know they love those retake situations. It doesn't work out that time. But still, MBU are in complete control of this game. Oh, and that just proves it. That is a nasty, disgusting, yucky shot to come through. Right before that probably can hit him. Gets the flick, has the confidence in the position, and shuts down the flashes before they can even get a chance to look at him. Hmm. It seems like RPI again want to go for this A hit. It's been the most, or well, I would say because all sight hits yeah. for them have failed, but this the <laughs> yeah, A sight right. has been the most has been the most favorable for them. It looks like the site where they're at, they actually have a chance to win. They tried to do like C aggressive pushes with stingers, didn't work. They tried B before in the very first round, and then I believe in a follow-up round, and they got, like, destroyed by one person. Or Face, at least in that there. second round they did. In the first round, they got destroyed on the retake. Nice. And now Meepy from Link, he loves this position with the operator. He's not going to play heaven like you usually would see an operator. Now he is going to rotate to that position. 3v5 in favor of MPU. And this is a retake that you should see come through. I also want to mention the fact that Kichi Wanner has ult back again in what was just three rounds. So that's actually ridiculous. Three left to hold this post plant. RPI have just won the last post plant. Can they do it again? Diggy's got one early from Hell, traded by Kichi. Tamper going to pick up one from Heaven and Trevi to wrap up that round. Nine to one for MBU. The retake barreling on in. They only drop one play. Yeah. Last time the retake wasn't as successful, but that was because mainly due to the fact that it was a 3v3 and it was very easy for RPI to hold the cross angles. Plus, they kept their composure really, really well. In that sense, you could tell, at least from the shakiness of Diggy in that held position, because of how many players were barreling in, I don't blame him for being shaky like that. With the amount of players barreling in at him, they couldn't necessarily do anything because everybody yeah. was coming in at the same time he's not tens he can't hit every single shot and it, and it sucks <laughs> but right, right. you know Ooh. good dark cover to counter that yeah jack can't dash away off of that angle be a dark cover to make sure they're safe and sound hambringer ain't doing it like me be chilla down long doesn't have the flick on point i was gonna be there but they got that rendezvous so they're chilling Back towards short, though. That's an aggressive angle for the totem. Can they get out in time? They can. The eyes of flash is into the dark cover and gone. It's retake city yet again for the MBU boys. Retakes have been so well for them. There goes a nice little fragment to zone out the attackers. Or not the attackers, sorry. The retake potential. And also to alert through mid from KJ. They don't have any scent in utility to watch their flank. Kanichi's not going to go for the flank. But that doesn't matter because they're all going to retake as a team from the link and heaven positions. But even regardless of that, that's a nice null command Good timing, from man. the KO. Yeah, great timing. And Moses gets two for his troubles. They shut down Meepy as he tries to jump back in. That null command was very pivotal in denying in you that app. retake or the potential retake because they couldn't really use that initiator you to lead a full potential, right. at least Sky or the the Soba, because they couldn't use their flashes, they couldn't use the recon in order to get info. That works. And RPI shut that one down. So really good round from them. Again, it yep. seems like they're adjusting to what MBU are doing on the defense, which is play to site, play to sites passively, and all they have to do is just keep their main advantage, rush a site, take control of it easily, and then they can just hold themselves uh, in that post plant. Yep. Hopefully, that's the plan. Yeah, very early MBU seekers that have come down through sewer. We'll have info that all of A's open, and the whole team, the running of the bulls, that's will come their way out towards A lobby. Kenichi will pick up one, Meepy another, Moses one trade before they do inevitably fall. Spike still towards spawn. FSD playing with fire here on this angle, and neither player will spot the other. So, opens out to safety for now. Dog to move forward, has spotted one. Has not seen. That KO towards the back of spawn. They'll walk over, try to come garage with Auntie Jay. 
working on space right now. There'll be a look towards platform though if they do decide to peek this. Mm. I said MBE weren't aggressive in the early rounds. Wait, what a way to make me eat my words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Screw the caster. <laughs> and they do it behind oh! the seekers. That's a nice shot from Diggy to kill a Harmbringer. A nice little teleport. I believe that knife was a mi not a miss throw, but it was a little bit late. It didn't affect Trev as he tries to teleport. But even then, he tries to teleport again, and he dies. So now, 2v2. Post plant for RPI retake for MBU. He said screw the caster. They said screw a handbringer. Crazy flick on him. Yeah. The world's be close, dark cover. She's running into trouble with both players. Oh. Ajil pick it up as that smoke fades. But Mipi Chilla has been able to cross towards sight. One kill activate a dash window and one cloud where to work off of. Can start this defuse. Gotta worry about the utility that they're coming through now. FSD gonna hit him with that fragment. And Mipi Chilla gonna step forward, looking for the first 1v1 and will win it. Doesn't know where that second player is going to be, though. As they walk their way out towards CT, Cloudburst online, thinking about half of the spike off now. Into the fight, and Auntie J going to pick it up. We'll win out that final 1v1, and RPI will grab their third round as we switch sides. Switching sides. That's a little bit scary there at the end because um, Moses is not, yeah, not Moses, sorry. Meepy Chinchilla, Meepy Chilla is most definitely a player who has been very confident in his ones. And he's proven his confidence in multiple different situations. Especially with that operator. When it comes to the retakes, at least. And even then, in that early round, last round for MBU, where they, they used the Seekers to aggress onto, and he was there in that gardens area to swing off. If I had one of the one of the first few first few picks there for MBU with the operator. So that's a very scary situation, but and RPI able to keep their composure in the post plant. 9-3 curse. I don't believe in it, but maybe. Well, RPI is certainly hoping that it is real in this map number one. Out of charges. Utils come early towards the C site. It's a, it's a heavy default from MBU. They haven't fully committed to the C just yet. Start to now move that spike over. Clear those players out towards CT. They're going to opt to take this space. They haven't moved oh. into that space they've created, though. Yeah. I was going to say that. That's kind of weird. They use that paranoia to kind of like sell that C fake. But I believe the rotation has been caught out here for it, not MBU. So I, I'm so used to it for them, to, the, uh, to them being on the defense. Not RPI on the defense, but RPI spot out their rotation as the Jet shot at somebody through mid. Trevi falls as he was trying to lurk through that same area as well. The knife ability trying to scout out any players through the wall. But now... Retake for RPI, as we have seen so many times from MBU, and Diggy starts with something. They do. Anji, I'll grab another. Hamburger has one on the rear. He was going to pick up Diggy, so it's a two on three towards the site. Now a two on one. Hamburger creep towards CT. What? It's picked up Moses, a one on one now. And Dingo just sticking towards the spike. Get that thing halved. Doesn't know what direction to look at. We'll see the feet. Hamburger now tasked to play for time. Gotta make sure Mandingo now on that spike has to swing through him. Mandingo's able to come around. We'll grab the wall bang. We'll finish that one out. RPI. Four to nine. They'll take a much needed pistol round. We'll get ever so closer to bringing this back to tide. It's crucial that he got that to half as well. Because if he didn't, or if he didn't stick it to half at least, good chance that Hambring Hambringer. Or Hambringer. Sorry ends up winning that round for his team based on time. But even then, you get to see the gun round coming in here from Pick RPI, or what, what can be the gun round in the second round and a half, or at least at the beginning yeah. of a game. The jump spot from Mandigo will spot at least one on that vision going down towards C line. They moved and given a lot Wait, of space away. And Diggy's all the way out garage. Meepy Chilla chilling with the spike. They were trying to C split. No one was there to help that spike carrier, though. So the most important part of the round now sits on the ground. Precise. Ah! Timing? Yeah. Diggy gets two from garage as they try, as MB try to retrieve the fuser. That was that was weird. Um MB tried to plant early on in B. And then they decided, oh, well, you know, I, we don't want to do B. We actually want to do C. So Mipi, come rotate with us. And he pushes to garage. 
without really any control or pressure right. to that position in the first place. It's a guy. I mean, again, it's a it's, in the, it's a save round, so not something to gawk at, but like the decision making from MBU not really so clear. Yeah, absolutely. Implications not incredibly huge, but it does make you a little bit nervous because they do have to play the rest of this attack in half. Rifles in their hands now. See if they change things up. Your point comes through early. Spots everybody a lobby, and Moe's is going to take Cambringer. So that's the Lurk Presence now gone. Trademark evaporated towards the rear of this push. And BU going to continue the contact journey. Trailblazers out has not seen the players. Oh, and then there's the drone. What are we clearing? That's the yeah. initiators right now. MB have no information. They're running in blind. FSD going to take two. Vandal for their troubles. Trevi has one back on the rear. Paranoia coming forward, running all the way to site full blind by the opposing That's Paranoia. Stuck here on site, praying for help. Kanichi tries to give it to him. Gets caught by NTJ oh, and FSD will take a 3k yes. out towards short. RPI, easy pickings on the defense. God bless the United States of America. I mean, come on, come on. <laughs> How do you miss both? Chef, the Trev with the dog and the um, owl drone. That's crazy in view. Well, Absolutely nuts. I'm going to take some heat off my boy Kenichi Wanner because, I mean, you're, you're droning through long, right? You're headed towards back of the site. You yeah. just saw your sky throw dog through short. Yeah. You, you trust that your sky dog is going to clear the angle. So I'll let okay. that instant slide. You, you trust that the sky dog is going to clear the angle. So you're not going to check it. That's It's all good. But you hate to see it. You really hate to see it. Found them. That definitely does suck. Because they lost the round based off of that. Also, the early op shot from the jet on the side of RPI. Who wasn't having a good game on the defense. But now on the attack. We see RPI, or not on the, I mean, on an attack, they weren't having a good half, but now on the defense, we kind of see RPI shine just a little bit. They're mounting some sort of combat, only being three rounds away, but they allowed B to be planted in. They lost mm -hmm. their oh. round with the guns, but they're able Wait to hold their own so far in the post plant with only sheriffs and just pistols and a headhunter. What is going on here? Yo, he pushes through the smoke. And Meepy just wants it all. You're right, Moses, with the operator. This is just a situation where you you just say, screw it, I'm I'm leaving. He can't leave. <laughs> they won't He's let him leave. Come here, big dog. Looking for that knife. Can't pick it up. The spike will take them all. But it's a thrifty round picked up from MVU. Initiator content goes awry in the previous round. This round, they make a little content to end it on out. They walk into B. The retakes on its way from RPI. They catch on to Jay off guard out towards short. They isolate that fight. Two players swinging out garage full confidence. They both get caught by sheriffs. And from there, it's two players left on the B side and they've got nothing to do. That must have been so terrifying. For the jet. Just trying to run away and then you hear like footsteps oh, right you. behind you. You try and smoke. You see a Sova, a Russian madman with a knife in his hand just chasing you. Like... Oh my God, that's scary as hell, but, well, MBU went around a real big thrifty round after, after a fast plant onto that B site, oh, hoping sorry. to make something happen here on an actual gun I'm round where they can it. be competent, at least with RPI, but then they lose two picks off rip. Now with the last three players alive, they are going to make a desperate attempt at this uh, A site. Again, up. you still have two good information gathering ops, the Sky and the Sovado Seekers coming out. And Auntie J has a tall hat task ahead of him. He's doing really good so far. He's doing excellent, actually. And he finds oh. the 3K for RPI as they get their seventh round. Suga, have you ever heard of a double swing? I don't think MB you have. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, just the folks at home, what's what's a double swing? I don't know. I don't think that was a double swing though. No, <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, don't not worry, at all. <laughs> typically, typically <laughs> when uh you have extra members in a location, or one player is. You want to double swing. So you want to come. So me be chilling when he swings, you want to swing with him, right? So he's playing yes, forward do. and the Kanichi's on the one swing. Yeah. Once again, it's hidden worlds on the one swing. So it's, you want to hit a little, if you're in your rank game, maybe you want to swing that player. You want to go, okay, we're going to swing the right side. Let's three, play. two, one swing. You swing as two. Someone gets the trade. That doesn't happen. 
You're right, and that doesn't. Shadows traveling. You see the like the one player swinging and his teammates just I don't know what I think he's watching Link, but even Come then on, that swing that should be communicated a lot better from NBU. And the KO utility, I think with a little bit of damage to the omen who dies. Or actually he doesn't, his um counterpart does die. We see MBU with the fast push into the A site like they did that last or those two rounds ago on that B site. But then a lockdown is going to come out, provide a lot of space because these are or actually not a lot of space, but of course the aggression here from MBU is either that or they clear out of the A site completely and give this space over to RPI. Oh wait, got Did that swarm far enough? Nah, hamburger chilling. Living life. Eat picked up right now. Flash to come forward. No one, absolutely no one swung off of it. Hamburger arms too wide. So Moz has that one for free on the body shot. Op shot. BP Chilla jumping into danger. And in worlds can't get into the angle. Quality smoke. Push him away. Good retake to come through on the eco team. Mm. Sorry, my attention was grabbed by my own mother. So. Imagine my shock. I look, I look, I look back at my screen. And then round <laughs> round's over. over. <laughs> yeah, round's <laughs> over. So, I mean, imagine my face when my mom was coming in. I look, I probably looked extremely angry when she did that. That's okay. I still, I still love her. But anyways. Um, I mean, that lockdown was very crucial in providing a lot of space there for MBU because, it, I, it, again, like I mentioned in the middle of that round, it either forces the aggression down, from MBU or it's forces them to back off completely away from the A site and back to their own spawn. First kill goes in favor of RPI as the jet is taking out, so crucial space making now taken away from MBU. As Meepy has been so good on at least the defense for getting the first picks with that operator, now doesn't even have the opportunity, at least on the attack in this round. We are positioning right now. Everyone's sitting outside towards garage. There's no space towards A long, so you're gonna see RPI. Hopefully this omen considers scaling. And has done just that. So they've got space towards A long. Know that nothing's gonna be there. I look towards C long just yet. FSD's caught Kanichi. He's all the way up into Cubby. So he's gone. That they're also gonna be RPI's defense starting to scale down. Good flash to Diggy. Can they capitalize? They can. And the world will peek away with that one. That's pushed players over towards garage. Can they take advantage of this rotation? Wow. Back in the angle, no flash. Love that. <laughs> I love the, the shady in that. And there left. goes FSD on a swing. It's only up to Harbinger. Or Hamburger. Ham you know what? Harbinger. Hamburger. Jesus Christ. I love names. I love them. But, oh my god, he literally oh, pulls so out the shorty for <laughs> Oh, that is wait, sad. He gets wait, 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 wait. Wait, RPI. Suddenly a winnable round. Suddenly. Because they push him 1v1, but he does have 6 HP against a Phantom of Auntie J. It's going to take a miracle for the chamber to win this on 6 HP. As the headhunter watching his flank through the spawn. But that's not where the omen is. Cover, is this an overread here from the chambers? Because he's just backing off from this. Hmm. I don't let him defuse. Get to half. Tapped it again. Still no look just yet. Has killed a bunch of time. They have no idea. They walk wow. through CT. And Hambringer, what started out as an impossible look on the 1v3, turns into a win. The shorty shots go awry. They leave him on six health. Grabs one 180s to take the B player. And then walks all the way down deep into defender spawn to try to catch that omen on rotation doesn't spot them because they're coming through that garage angle instead so kills extra time there's no way the omen's ever expecting that player to have walked that deep into ct so hamburger is able to walk back in grab a pick on a player not looking and win out a round i'll find you that was one off of some really slim margins again well that's a very slim shot as we see Trevi fall early to the op shot of Moses playing inside. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Inside a sewer. I can't even get my words out because he literally has- Too fast. To, too fast. That's what that is. She's extremely fast. He's gonna put himself by mural. Okay, this is a more favorable position. I thought he was just gonna stay there. 
with the op. That would have scared the hell out of me if he did. Did he kill? That's actually good awareness. They kill the controller. They know they've got no ability to realistically smoke this heaven angle. Okay. Inner worlds will show up. We'll out out the opera with a vandal headshot. So Moses traded back now from heaven. Now Nightfall's coming out early. They want the early retake game right now. And that's because that lurk is already here up towards A long. If they can get the pressure out early, it gets potential for this lurk. But Hiji Wander trying to shut it down. I think he's already walked past. Picked up one on the hidden worlds. BB Chilla now waiting for the team to get back towards long. Fragment and force BB Chilla make a choice. We'll step forward. Kills the diffuser, but won't get killed by Diggy. Hiji Wander now to do it all. He's picked up one. Needs the spray transfer, but can't pick it up. Man, Dingo has a trade. And RPI gonna win out the retake. They run it down with that pressure, and the lurk is massive to give them that ninth round victory. Crush the trades there from RPI at the end, at least. The trade game working in their favor. Also, the retake along with the lurk being such a good, like, combination of just things going right there for RPI. And MBU had to focus on so many things at once. They had to split up their players, at least in numbers, and force at least two of them to focus on the flank, one of them to focus on the actual retake. But what they didn't know is that the numbers on the retake actually was happening in through Lincoln. So they left their only player to just die to two players in that held position. Now we get to see the early knife come out, or not the early knife, sorry, the Sova dart to come out. Auntie finds the first hit. There goes FSD from garage window. And it's just, Every bit of pressure that MBU want to try and do has crumbled at the seams. Spike dropped. Yeah, absolutely. Perfectly stated. Hidden World's going to step in the garage. We see her there consistently trying to make space. Not possible this time either. Auntie J has one. Moses to finish the last player. The flaws, anti-eco from RPI. Just how you'd want to draw that one on up. Now Rifle's drawn back into this one for MBU. And they'll draw themselves up a play as well. They'll go to the timeout. They'll go to the huddle. Valor plant activated. And we'll see if they're able to find a strat. Um, I had a thing to say. Okay. I will say it eventually. It's going to come to me eventually. Sure. Just wait on it. All right. I'm like holding. we're waiting on this timeout. I'm also Everybody holding. hold. Everybody hold. I have a thought. It takes me a while to generate these. So, you know, take it. With as much value as you can, because I don't usually come up with a lot of thoughts. Now, see, I, I literally did forget what I said. That's crazy. Oh my god. Ah, oh, I'm so I'm so annoyed. I'm so annoyed with myself. You like I mean, in these timeouts, like genuinely, we would take timeouts when I played collegiate, and we'd come out of the timeout, and I would forget the entire strat. Like, I would be in the wrong place, oh. and everyone would be mad. I remember what I was gonna say. That last round for MBU was a pistol round, so that kind of explained Careful. a lot of like the aggressive gunfights that they were taking and also losing. But even then, when they have had gun rounds where they're able to pull by, they're still not able to like win their ones as a convincing leader, falling victim to the same sure. thing that RPI did. And that was just like the retakes and also not really clearing as much as they probably should because RPI did that as well and they have a double initiator. So mm. not a lot of excuses from them, but MBU they do have, they're running a double initiator as well. So no excuses for them either. Sure. That's the, I think it's worth it. This game was, was eight and zero at one point. Yeah. I think that smoke just blocked that um, recon dart. It did. Yeah. That it did. Fortunately, it'll be in a different direction. Regardless, they'll work over towards A. Flash back the sight does not blind the omen, so they will not know the presence. And OTJ yet again back a sight, cleaning house. Picks up two handbringer finally to grab that trade, but not before two crucial members of the post plant gone from this one. They have a hundred sphere moving forward, but they're on the crossfire angle instead, so there's no way they're gonna be able to utilize it. Peachy steps into close contact, picks up one. Full flash on a handbringer, trying to stay alive here on Twitch site, has been able to do so. Blades from pot for Moses, waiting for the teammate to come out towards CT. It's a fragment from FSD to put the checkmate scenario. Hamburger has to swing into the angle, gets caught out. It's 11 11. What was once an 8 0 score line is now tied up. Try again. Haven is supposed to be attacker side, and I feel like I'm getting, I'm getting like, I'm having some sort of like conniption here. Like I'm in like, it's opposite day. It's not Wednesday yet. Tomorrow's Wednesday. In, it's not same day. Hmm? I don't like what you tried to do there. I'm not even gonna hmm? lie. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like do what you just did there. Do you not understand it? No, I don't. 
I'm having a tough time trying to understand it. I wouldn't lie to you, but I, I don't. Oh, so I don't you like do it understand it because opposite day. So you saying you don't you understand it means you do. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, we're on the same page. I think so. Oh, Molotov. Oh, Moth is now on the same page with their bullets. That one goes awry. Hunter's Fury out and MVU looking to take this one to the tank. Oh, actually, you're going to stall the one out, though. One paranoia, I think, the difference. They said, okay, never mind. You know, I, I don't really like it. So the ults come out. They're not feeling the execute. So they use all that util, and they've gained how much space, everybody? None. None. <laughs> and Nader with the sarcasm again. I love it. I love it. I love sarcasm. That's, like, oh. my whole, like, little joke. Oh. Oh, oh, no. Okay. Well, at least they get the trade back with the um, sheriff, because again, this is a save round from MBU. The sheriff. Whoa, oh, that sounds what? crazy. Trevor was in this position the whole entire time. Yep. RPI have not figured that out because that that prowler so early on missed him. So much for recon. it didn't really fully clear that middle box position. Mandigo now in garage finds one. They have the gun advantage in the two v three. And I'm guessing the armor advantage too, because this is a save round. Usually you don't invest in armor. And if you do, it is light armor, but they do have the Tour de Force. And with the changes to the Tour de Force so long ago, you will see Tour de Forces more or less, more at least in these save rounds. And Breezer, probably gonna win a thrifty for his team, but not if RTJ has something to say about it. It really comes out past oh, the smoke, so but it says shot through the smoke with the Tour de Force. From or at least from Hammager onto Auntie J, and now we finally see MBU on a match point. You know, one of my least favorite, uh, like caster quotes is they crossed all the T's, dotted all the I's, but I don't have a better thing to say. So, um, RBS defense did not do such a thing, like. When they cut, when you cut noise, you always still want to check the fronts of sight just in case a player did sneak through. Like that whole opening is smoked and you have no real info on it, so you still need to check it. And just no one checked it. So that was Trevor to get spacing to pick up two frags. They have no business grabbing and end up winning them that round. Cover going out. Yeah. Again, they use so much stall utility, and then when it came to like the retake, at least with the two men people that, that they too. did have, when they uh, when they came for the retake with the two people that they did have. They didn't have any utility for the retake because they used it all at the early stages of that round. The paranoia yeah. coming out, the nightfall also coming in as well from the attack. Or not the attack, sorry, from the defense. But not a lot gained from I feel that. Like zero norm. point. I think that scans both. Yeah, that does. Not a lot gained from the oh, early utility usage from either one of these teams, but at least that zero point does give them some information on the source position from MBU. Oh. Oh, wait, All right, the pair pair is gonna come through from long. Auntie J caught right now. Another flash to come through. Finally Ooh. playing past that dark cover. Hidden Worlds will walk into danger. If you still got a trade, though. Trevi TPs towards the back of the site, caught by the players in that location will fall. Okay, she's got a trade. Meepy jumping to site, but Mandingo never cleared out of the short position. So we'll pick that one up for free. Quick plant was looked for by the Jet, but they're caught out now instead. Recon has info on the Mandingo, but a swing has to come through, and it's a Prowler to catch Handbringer. He's got no sight. Mandingo's got a 3K off the back of theirs. 12-12. It's tied up. It's overtime activated. You're in map number one. I said a couple hours. I didn't actually mean it. You no, nah, you right. I don't think I like being right. That's the thing. <laughs> oh, again, you mentioned this a lot of times. This was at first a nine three, well, an eight zero lead from MBU, a nine three half from them as well, and they have struggled to close it out on the attack. Struggled to find rounds to piece together, but that's not to say that RPI haven't. At the same struggle. Haven is notoriously known to be an attacker side of map, but neither one of these teams have been very consistent on their attacking rounds. And that sucks. But first blind comes out from the side of MBU with the guiding blank. Doesn't really get a lot of information as that's not where most of push is coming from from RPI. It's actually going to be a split push towards C. That it will be. That space given away. And Hambringer caught in the dark cover. Diggy Intuition leads them to 
promised land of a pick. Now the player advantage for RPI here on the post play. Kenichi's drone spots one. Oh no, but the second player is out garage door though. So there's opportunity for a trade to come through thanks to the likes of Auntie J. SMB, you're gonna swing the right towards CT. Meepy chill, the entry duels to pick up one. Paranoia will keep Moses at bay towards site for now. Cloud versus to sneak them into space with zero point will make that suppression come through. Makes him have to play so much more careful without that util. Shorty One shot's got nothing yet thus far. And Trevi and Kenichi Warner have three individually, so they've got themselves space. And Dango out towards Garage. Caught by the Sova. 3k for Kenichi on the retake. A 13-12 scoreline. SMBU back into match point. Switching sides. Oh. Match point. Get to see MBU on another match point. RPI, for the most part, haven't been in the lead at all this game. They've been playing catch up. And they did catch up. So, I mean, that's why we're in OT. But now MBU on a match point. Can it close it out here as they do take the first blood here in OT? Yeah, that was a really good situation for the retake. RPI couldn't really find those proper post plant positions. And they found themselves in really, really hard spots to get the refrags as well. So now, on a defense where both teams have found some sort of dominance, NBU now going on to the attack. They have the Owl Drone that scouts out the KJ's position. It's a very dangerous position to be in, Bro. but uses the Nano Swarm to buy time. Bro, that's the only Nano Swarm that he has. You're not getting out, bro. <laughs> I don't, that's such a bad position to play in. Oh You're the worst player to be there. Not gonna lie. You have yeah, no ability to get out at all. Even that dark cover there. I mean, at that point, if I'm Diggy, I'm walking in the angle and just spam and hoping maybe I kill one with me. You, you know nothing's happening there. And MVU have cut the noise. I've ran it down towards A. They know the rotations have come through. They're absolutely right on that one. It's just Anti J back of sight. Can they finally shut this Omen player down? Paranoia so far to blind Kenichi Wander has picked up one. Not today will fall early. No more multi kills this time around. Hambringer is going to have that one traded away. They've got the plant down. One post plant to give MBU map one. I don't think that Mike got any information because nobody was near that, like the sewers position or the mirror position neither. So they get nothing from it. A well timed paranoia ensures that they could swing, but they don't swing off of the paranoia anyways, even though Trevi did that one for them. Remaining. Oh. Ends up in a 1v1 after a multitude of trades of flash from the sky, but you're please, not please, watching please, behind please. you. You're not looking to your left. Lindsay, there's Moses. two angles. It's Moses to clutch out of 1v1. Oh, <laughs> Lindsay, they can walk around. No, oh, we can't let that one slide. I'm, I'm a caller right now. Oh, we can't let that one slide. Oh no, not like this, not like this. The difference between MBU winning map one or overtime two is turning around. How do you even analyze this game? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm like serious. How do you analyze it? You, you, you run a replay that round. Oh man. And you say, this is the game. And then it all makes sense. EP Chill out early to grab one instantaneous trade from Moses. And RPI gonna look for a B plant in an early gun round. Look for a B plant in OT. That's now nah, that's bomb. Oh, this is terrifying. This is terrifying. This is terrifying. But they're marked. Yeah, she's marked. She marked got not yeah, yeah, dead. Tagged and bagged, if you will. That I like that. That's nice. It rhymes. But now the Prowler comes out. Paranoia hits the players inside, but again, no aggression behind it. There goes a well, a misplay shock dart as FSD falls. And now MBU 3v3 retake. Nice dart, or at least nice information gathering to ping out the player in the back of B. They're gonna try and defuse the spike. The last player alive is gonna be Diggy. He has the smoke in front of him. He has to get the light up press. Who's out the press? No. What are you doing? <laughs> I actually love that play. I, don't I, don't, I, don't says, I love that play. It's a seven second defuse. If they half it, they've still got a three and a half Match seconds point. to sit on it. You notice that the round ends with 2.7 seconds left. So realistically, if they had hit the right click onto the diffuser, there wouldn't have been time to defuse anymore. Is the play kind of goofy? Yeah, yeah, but if they hit it, it you would have thought it was cool. I don't know. 
you would have. I'm telling you, people think uh, people think celebrities are goofy until they're famous, and then suddenly they're cool. I'm, that's all I'm saying. You know what? That's true. I got you. I got you. I I'll take. I'll take. I'll take that. I don't know. It just it caught me off guard when he just decided to pull out the classic <laughs> and jump through the smoke. Now that now that is crazy. That takes some real cojones. Yeah. I would have just let them defuse if it were me. Then again, I'm scared of everything in this game. But there you go. The horror game. Yeah. Okay, we finally have the space in garage for the MBU side. Can they cease what effectively yeah, is the question though? Two back of sight this go around. Diggy will be there to help out. Has picked up the first on the Trevi. That's been that big impact fragger on the support for MBU and now gone out the round early. That's the smoke's gone as well. And Worlds trying to throw a smoke in the dark cover as it fades. Caught out by Diggy. So that's a 2k for the yeah, kills right now traded out. Bendigo gonna find one. Maybe Chilla trying to find opportunity from Garage, but caught out and everybody gonna get their spoils in that one. RPI will take it to overtime number three. Switching sides. Overtime. Well, I, I, I literally, I literally was joking when I said this may last for a couple hours. I don't think MBU or RPI are joking, so that's crazy. But even then, MBU lose that round despite being given garage control from RPI. That's a good and point. they just the, the main thing that screwed them up was the site hold from M MB from RPI. They couldn't clear out the site. They couldn't clear out that space because of how aggressively RPI were holding it. And the garage players really didn't have any effect in that round. I, I could have argued maybe they push a little bit deeper, but they didn't. And Diggy finds one, but FSD is now killed through, through mid. No, sorry, no, that wasn't that wasn't Gardens. I'm I looked at the blue mark and I instantly thought that was him in mid. I was like, what the hell is Okayo doing in the mid? Wide open C sites will be walked upon will be planted upon so rpi planted. carousing thus far now for the post plant they've got a lockdown a post plant ultimate to do run. it with they can stall so much time on the mbu retake that's been so successful thus far yeah it's gonna force mbu to play aggressively nice. behind it they have to they know if they back off that they give rpi that time to play the post plant adjust their push and they lose time on the spike they also lose time on the site itself so they play aggressively behind it they win out their ones i don't think rpi were expecting that aggression because they didn't re really react on time and now we see mbu on another match point on the attack here we are yet again ladies gentlemen and whomever else resides within the twitch chat it's the third Match point on the attacking side for MBU. Can they put it away is the question. They've had their chances. They once led this game 8-0. to zero. Can they make things different on this one? Can they close it away? Moses up close with the op shot. And everybody's coming sewer, and they're coming quick, Suga. Yeah, they are. Prowler goes out through a long. Then readjusts. Then uses the second Prowler to go through sewers. Now that... Recon dart is really, really good, but also the fragment was there nice. to hold them off to not re-aggress off of the back of that recon dart. Now we see Moses get one as MBU find two, but Jesus Christ, Moses rushes into a multitude of crossfires. And Konichi's there, he goes out the round for MBUs. They take map number one. Finally, we get an attack win, and it happens in OT. It took a while. It took a but we got it. They've done it. We went the distance. It took us all the way to three overtime. Suga got a sandwich mid-map, finished the whole thing, got seconds before that one ended. That's just how long the map took. And all I can think is at one point, MBU led that game eight to zero. Yeah. That's crazy. Again, that attack just fell, fell apart. So fell apart so many time in regulations and it was not just from them it was from rpi the main reason why this went to ot was because both teams just had a poor attacking half yep. on haven which is notoriously attacker sided so i'm i was very confused a lot of the time by a lot of the things that i was seeing a lot of corners not being fully 
cleared, a lot of positions going unnoticed, and retakes being completed despite man advantage for the attackers in a number of rounds. And I mean, both teams played their asses off on the attack, or sorry, on yep. the defense, but the attacks were just a real, a real letdown for me, honestly. Sure. Well, fortunately, it will not be a letdown for MBU. They were able to find themselves that first map on what is their map pick. We'll head over to Valorant's Golden Child of Maps, a set for map number two. When we get back from the break, don't go anywhere. PCAC Week 5 action here on Esports YouTube. strategy when there were 10,000 now have 500,000 plus that 10,000 to figure out how to activate who they are. That's a lot. I understand brands hesitancy in some instances, but I can tell you that companies like us are on a daily basis, educating brands and student athletes as to the software you can use, the types of activations you can get involved in and how to utilize your followings. Or if you don't have to, or want to be, a social media star, are there ways in which you can monetize it? Now, I know I describe that under the umbrella of the NCAA, but I see it as being no different in esports. I think there are massive opportunities for people with followings to be able to use that and connect with brands. I think a company like us can help you to do that. And then beyond that, we can make sure that those transactions are safe for you. I think there are opportunities, not just at the individual competitor level, but at the program level to have a sponsorship go to that. I'm sure some of you out there listening and watching already have deals like that in place, but I think we can continue to enhance, augment those deals and make them more comprehensive and make them, uh, first of all, I think product deals are perfectly fine, but I think we can get beyond that and grow some of these deals to a greater extent. Pauly, thoughts on that? Yeah, um, you know, you what you said is right. So I'll put it in for layman's terms here for just the esports players, because I talk to so many of our yeah. athletes that compete in our CECC series that are currently still in college. And basically, what what, what my, my Mike Blue says NIL, what he's referring to is just sim very simple. If a brand or any sort of anyone wants to use your school's name name or your name or your brand or anything with you. There is a deal for you that can be put in place, whether it's product deal, whether it's a paid endorsement, you can, whether you're a macro influencer or whether you're a micro influencer, you can be paid for your services. So uh, most of the people, when I talk to them, most of the, I won't say people, college athletes, they are, uh, you know, intimidated by the word. They don't really know what it means. They've never done anything with it before. And that's what it means. Any single time a brand or anyone at all wants to use your name or do a, a deal with you or do so, some sort of activation with you or your school. That's basically what the layman's terms, the NIL uh, meaning comes from. And uh, it's evolving in this space. There are so many brands that want to associate with micro and macro influencers uh, and just get people involved with their products or their services. So all of you, you know, collegiate athletes out there that are competing in esports, uh, very uh, keep not only are we trying to broker those deals, but also keep your eyes, ears open and don't be shy or, or scared to take these deals because that's what I've heard the most is that most of the time they're just scared to take them. They don't know what they are. They don't know if they're locking themselves into some agreement or terms that they're like going to give their name away or something too. So uh, this is a really important space and it's how you're all going to physically make money and build your brands along with company brands. So it's really important to learn. And my, my advice is to just get your feet wet. Don't worry about shying away, read the contracts and take some of these deals because growing your own brand is the future of what our, our industry is going to be, in my opinion. Exactly. And if you follow in the, in the pro space, um, you'll see that uh, the pro teams are not only focusing on competitive play, but a lot of them are focusing on their brand and, and their cultural importance in the space. And so, you know, one of the things that we do also is help athletes build their brand, build their following. And that's part of what Polly and Kyler are doing on their side when we do this behind the scenes training. And so, you know, building your brand, this is the creator economy. Uh, anybody and everybody can be anything they want to be. And so we just really want to be the conduit that supports that across the board. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and I think so. With that said, thank you everyone for, I think, for great insights in terms of for any of you that were watching this and maybe had questions about, you know, what is esports U, what is CSMG, who are they, what are they doing, what are our plans, right? Well, you know, we, we, we know we kind of tried to make a bigger splash in the spring and 
We're excited to bring more stuff with you guys. But Welcome back on in everybody to the Esports U Network. We're here with an ECAC Week 5 matchup. Missouri Baptist University versus Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. MBU's got a 1-0 on their map pick. Now it's over to a set. I'm Catinator. That's Suga. We're taking you through it. <clears throat> Shoot. I had to clear my throat. Sorry. Yeah. That game on Haven was just was just a lot. <clears throat> yeah. I think too you much could say that. at times. You you could say that. I, I think too much in terms of round count. Oh not yeah. gonna lie. Okay. Uh three overtimes after what was initially an eight oh start for Missouri Baptist University. I think uh you hit the, the nail on the head. The fact that uh you know, both teams struggling just a little bit to get the attacky side going. I think a lot of that came from uh, the lack of defaults from either of them. Yeah, no, there were a lot of times where you just saw them try and like, because A was like a very favorable site for them, favorite site for both teams, at least either A or B. You saw them try and like push into C, A, get shot at, and then they just like run away to the other two sites. And it was kind of like, oh, it was either that or they'd make like a play on one site they'd util them and then they wouldn't act behind that utility and said they stayed back went yeah. to like another area of the map then went right back it was it was crazy to watch at times but yeah now it's sent <gasps> my astra goat. my goat is out trevi on the astra fantastic yes. job for them on the omen they also had a couple of rounds where like on their defense, they were lurking up towards sewer. They were finding picks that way. They're having a massive value as the A-side anchor and that's the lurk to the team defensively. Now you bring the Astra in, you can throw those stars from anywhere on the map. It allows you to get really fancy with that lurk. So I'm excited to see what that brings to the table. Interesting that we got, what is that Sova pick into Haven? No Sova on Ascent. It's kind of, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, even on Ascent, you talked about it before in like the like the little pre-show that we had when we were like discussing the maps. With Sova, Sova's uh home is like the scent. It's either a scent or breeze because bigger maps are better for Sova. Sova, Sova, mm. Sova. Smaller maps are better for Fade. But even then, on the scent, Fade has kind of like knocked them, knocked them down in the order of favorites when it comes to that information gathering utility. See, also, uh, we get a roll swap coming through. We've got a uh, Kenichi, the IGL swapping rolls away from the Sova and now into Killjoy for this one. Mm. Uh, they've taken their chamber away as well because they do yeah. add that Killjoy to the map. So we'll see. We got a new world to look off of here. We got Diggy back on the Killjoy yet again. And Killjoy's had a lot more value as Sentinel in terms of cat control, in terms of B main control. The swarm grenades, impeccable. So a little bit more value than that trademark now that it does make so much noise. So, no shame this one. We'll have the Jets as the opping agency, the Andrew Duels instead. I think in Cleed, Jets a lot more comfortable than a race. So, I think that pick just kind of works out. These comps look better for him. Yeah. Also, when you're also sizing the KJ up to Chamber, she can hold on to site and mid too. With Chamber, you have to make like more of a decision with that trademark to hide, to hold either the main entrances with it and then physically hold mid or the main entrances one or the other it doesn't really matter but rpi is starting off with a fast push through oh, what the hell oh. is going on trevi with the 4k almost on an ace and he just got half of his like ultimate points because of that yeah got his vibe coming through early in this one trevi steps in grabs a 4k as those players try to split their way to market and be main that Astro Star so early out towards mid forces those players to get deep into the market angle. And Dingo's able to pick up one and well into an absolute massacre when they swing farther into that angle. The Astro is huge on it. Limited money for RPI, so can't even really get shares into this one if they wanted to. They'll be full eco onto this there. round. Certainly see them run something down, look for a spike plant for the troubles. There. And MBU should be up 2 0 here when this one's said and done. won't really use the the haunt ability or won't really get a chance to use the haunt ability sprays through wall anyways nailed them doesn't get that information to Dang. gets shut down with that um with the knife but even in the first kill happens in mbu's favor looking to get their second round in a row put themselves up two to oh 
that nano swarm being there provide some type of space for the attackers but it can't do anything diggy tries to run away shouldn't have done that now we're in a 1v4 moses over near the b main position and even though he heard him grab that orb he does still have the classic so against the area is not gonna happen that's not right that's not right no it's not Ain't nothing like walking to the angle, completely defenseless opponent, and they still pull out the gun and take you down before you can make anything happen. And I just, I have to mention, I have to mention, on the leaderboard right now, it is 4-3-2-1-0 in terms of the kills. This could not be better for MBU. Is that an early operator I spot? I only saw it, like, briefly. I think that is in that, yep, that is an early operator. We saw this last round from MBU on their defenses where... Uh, Meepy was in, uh... Okay, Trevi. Yeah. Where Meepy... <laughs> where Meepy... <laughs> what is Trevi doing? Uh, where Killing. Meepy literally invested in an operator early on. Oh. Now the Astra are gone, so there's a lot of stall potential gone as well for the defense. But, you know, again, we see that indecision coming in from the teams. It looks like they wanted to commit towards A. Gonna make that late rotation towards B and looking at the amount of attention paid attention to either one of these sites i could totally see them making a play for b and making it work but again they have to be wise to to the to the potential of there being a player in a b site because there actually is a player in the back of boathouse oh be hamburger close shots fired but nothing to land diggy is gonna send that one away and be see if they can get back into this one they got some wire full upgrades Moving forward into this one, I have a Phantom to work off of, and we'll see what kind of value it's able to bring this team. Swarmers to push themselves forward. Anti J on this close copy gang, taking out Kanichi. Leave it chill with the trade. That's that Phantom player. Swap around, caught by the drone though, so no looks to be had, and it's Moses spamming through the boat door of the wall. Excuse me, we'll take that one away. A 2K. Then the round for Moses, a 1-2 score on RPI to find that round. So no bonus this go around for MBU. They won't string all those rounds together as they did in map one. They've got to rebuy into this one. Mm. Again, that early investment into the operator will hurt them economically. Especially, I mean, coming into this round, you lose a round where you try and invest into your, well, bonus, as it would be considered. Keep they up. do get to still have two Vandals, but they have two Sheriffs and a Classic. Clearly not a position that they would want to be in, and considering the guns they do have, they want to go for that early mid-pressure, challenging onto that catwalk position, but in doing so, they give up sight. Spam through the door. I'm gonna look to take themselves forward. I haven't moved just yet. Auntie J gonna swing around towards scaffold to pick up one. Trevi with the trade. This team's still trying to push their way forward. Maybe Chill's got a crazy sheriff. Has laid out FSD on the headshot. Two players tucked towards hell. The Prowler will not swing for it. it was all the way out scaffold and says they don't know about the hell player is just yet. Dog should give the info. That should spot both. Stunned one most definitely. Spam's coming through under the hell right now. Haven't landed. Moses is gonna land shots on the end of world as she falls first. Diggy out towards main. Picks up one of the Meepy. Traded back by Hamburger now. Now they look to swing towards health together. Dark's gonna spot these players out. Man, Nico has one. Chevy out the round. Hamburger's got it all to do now. Haunt to move forward. No one having to worry about getting sighted. They've shot it too quickly. Hamburger will switch guns. Time running short. Picks up one. No spray transfer though. Moses a trade. It's a 2 2 score line. It's a rifle round. Picked up for RPI. Broke Eco. Should get themselves a third round now. Mm. And even despite the gun disadvantage that MBU had, they still made that round kind of, well, close in terms of man count. Even FPI getting that spike down, establishing the cross in hell. Having that position or that flank through catwalk, as you do get to see that 4K at the beginning of the round from Trev. I don't know how the hell he got that. That's crazy. I mean, he just aimed and shot. That's, that's quite literally it. And um, RPI weren't really clearing their corners in that round, but we get we got to see it again, so it's a really nice little run. 4K from Trev. Now we get to see the Killjoy ultimate, but even then, this is the downside to the ultimate on the attack. It doesn't really cover a yep. lot of ground, and so you can hide in the back of this boathouse, playing this position, and it's not like RPI are aggressing on this at all. Oh, this they don't check shots. He gave it away. He's gonna find one though, a second as well. Spray transfer is big enough, and then Nightfall, as you mentioned, tag the players coming in. So they're deaf right now. FSD still pick up Whoa. two from logs. Hamburger and Trevi both gonna fall. 
Just towards site mode, the spotted out though. Both players are gonna be here towards main. Just up to Kichi you wanted to kill some time in the back of Boathouse. It's taking a third, and Hidden Worlds will finish FSD. So MBU will come back swinging around. They don't, they're not really expected to win. They'll win it anyway, three to two. Yeah, Konichi just playing that Boathouse um, position to fruition. Finds a 4K. Me almost gave up, gave up his positioning quite early as well in the back of Boathouse. I mean, his position was going to be known because of the Nightfall ability anyways. But even when his position was known because he gave his position away from shooting early, he still was able to find a 3K in that, in, in that round. And that was huge. And then he was able to stay alive for the whole entire round as well. I mean, fair enough to the KJ. Again, that lockdown showing why it has some disparities on the attack. At least for the B site, because you can hide in the back of Boathouse and not have anything happen to you. But even then, regardless of that, Mipi finds the first pick. It is a gun round, or not even a gun Spike round, sorry. It's a save a. round from RPI. And early aggression towards that A main area is shut down. Extra damage is going to come to the Sova on the back line of things. Treffy pushing the extremities over towards Garden. Mipi still has Mandingo, so that's that early damage finally rewarded finished out trevi goes into oh. the astral form just as moses swings that time it could not have been worse you do hate to see it fsd will be close pizza slowly 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 getting pinched upon still alive though tag damage back to hambringer he's gonna swing it forward doesn't want to mess with them and well he'll learn why not to most brief years as he finds a pick needs you with the trade four to two sembu gonna lead this one in the round count mm. Yeah, that push towards A main just really screwed them up. It left the spike in an unretrievable position. And it's a save round as well. At that point, RPI, the last two players remaining, which was FSD and Moses, they were just playing to get picks at that point. And fair enough to them, they're trying to do some damage to the economy of NBU. They succeeded in doing so because they did kill two players. One of them was Amberger, and he's on zero credits this round, but even then... Another player was also the other player that they took out was also on like a thousand something credits. So, you know, they did something, but other players are still able to full buy in this round. And RPI lurking or having some sort of lurker towards B main readjust their focus towards A. There's stars being set up as well from Trevi having no one to push him through that tree's position, smoking out A short. But flying Drive. position, yeah. Good drive. Um, Worlds throws the dog there as the drone comes through to try to make that team not clear towards wine. I do like the implication. It doesn't work though. Forcing me to kill it does have that dash to get away. Or he'll move to generate to pick up one traded now by Anti J. So the team still takes their way into sight. This null command gonna guarantee this team doesn't take a quick retake, but they've got plenty of retake ultimate so impossible. The copying divide can split off those two players towards A main. They're gonna have that lockdown ability as well if they want to make an opportunity happen towards back of the site. Lockdown's gonna go through door scaffold early. Hunter's Fury out looking for the trade. That means it's not going to be there to stop on the post plant. Hambry's going to take out Moses with a nice wall bang coming from that scaffold positioning. Each one going to play so far forward here. Throw that turret into the nebula. So if these players want to peek, they're going to know about it. The alarm bot, the same difference. Trevi going to sit there for Generator. Gets the hold. The smoke is going to be there. Mandingo will take him just before the defuse is finished. Suddenly, still a chance for FSD and a one on two. Players low will take the defuser, but Kanichi will have the trade. Six HP and still so confident on that close contact angle. It's five to two. It's a three round difference. And MBU have broken the bank of RPI. Oh. I mean, the stall utility again for MBU on the retake. We saw how many retakes they did on Haven. Haven is a map where retakes are just a thing. Anyways, it's very common to end a round off on a retake from the defense. That retake was one based off the stall utility from both the KJ and the Astro using that smoke and then using the Nano Swarm to dissuade any pushes coming in through it, the Alarm Bot as well. And the trades at the end there working out in NBU's favor. It allowed them the time through that stall utility as well to get on in on the spike, get it to half at least. Almost got it to full, but then the last player who did get on that died. And uh, the KJ was at least able to trade him out and finish the, the job for him on the spike. That early action utility yet again is coming down in towards mid. They've been a little more passive about it this time, waiting for noise. And I have like that call. Hidden Worlds and Mipi Chilla both going to find early contact on the extremities. A still keeping the ball rolling. Mipi Chilla 3k when all is said and done. The Hidden Worlds will grab the last player to A as well. 6 to 2 to Flawless Anti Eco. Remember, you and RPL put rifles back in their hands this round. 
off topic, but I do like the Ion bundle. I talked to some friends uh, recently. I do have those, apparently. And they said they didn't like the Ion bundle. Vandal bundle. I was very surprised. Because I, I love it. They're poor. They're broke. Damn. I'm also poor and broke. They don't like it because they can't buy it. Think about it. I can't buy it neither. I'm going to buy it this week, but not right now. It's really nice. I like it. I like the blue skin better than the um, than the yellow and the uh, red. Same. Nice. I mean, it matches the killjoy, so we'll let it slide. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Placing swamp grenade. Anything for KJ. Oh, these seekers coming oh. early. MB was taking all this space outside of B long. They know this one's coming. A, they've got it down to a T. RPI gonna play out, but boy, are they unsafe as this lurk is coming. Turret's gonna be there to know about it. Kishi's gonna be scaffold to let them know that there's presence all around here. He's picked up one. BB Chill on the flank has another. FSD will trade Kishi now. Auntie J gonna get involved in the flank. Traded back by BB Chill, who's got a second look on the lurk. Hampering him to pick up one through the scaffolding yet again. Try to finish the last and we'll oh. do just that. FSD will jump the box. It's caught seven to two for MBU, a five round lead. I'd be so triggered if somebody just like crouched, shot me with the Odin. That's what I'm saying. That's crazy. See me personally, I'm just, I'm just kidding. But like, mm, they did very good in an early round RPI using that knife early to to dismantle the KJ so that she couldn't use her utility in order to to like waste time on that push through A. And RBI did a really good job of like knowing that they got the KJ disabled. They just aggressed straight into a, into A and took that space, but they couldn't get the spike down because Konichi was in heaven. And I mean, Konichi again in the early round situation, even though he's disabled, doesn't have any utility to use. He's going to find two. Ooh, the dink. Yeah, it's aggression from MBU. All this space in mid for RPI FSD. No. Oh. Ignore the utility. We'll run it down regardless. And Hambringer will meet their maker caught out over in that defender spawn. I have some space to work with. They finally got themselves all that mid control. They have to be able to do something with it. The hidden worlds out first to try to shut this, these players down to the defender spawn. Auntie J, how much HP? Let me know, Observer. FSD can find Kenichi. I guess it's the more important Fred find first. Mm -hmm. Give me the omen. Give me the omen, please. Please. Six HP and Auntie J was able to take a confident fight and has won that one as well. Can you believe that? Auntie J, six HP, still took the fight CT, won it out, and then wins out the last fight as well. That is confidence like no other. I mean, we did see a, a 1v3 clutch as well um, from Hamburger on that Chambers, and he was six HP too. I can buy. So I'm thinking six is the lucky number here. Uh, and it's, I mean, aggression from MBU that at first was, it, 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 it paid off very well with the 2k from Kenichi, but then after that, it started to fall apart. They had to play, they had to like push further back, isolated themselves, gave up picks one on one against the players against, uh, of RPI. And then, uh, RPI just, you should uh, run. Just waited. Just waited for that rotation from the last player now. Lockdown going to be used. Nobody playing in the back of Boathouse. So it's not like they can like not like uh, move back there or anything like that. Anyways, because if they push in, then the attacker, yeah, that, that Killjoy ultimate is just, it's just gone. But there you go. RPI will brute force their way into the V site and meet Pichilla. And to start this retake off nice. Top Moses. Kanichi will have Auntie J for the TP. He can come through and Trevi will trade Diggy out towards lane. Mandingo back of sight. Everything to do. Has picked up the first 1v1. Trevi goes out alone. Both players gonna play their way towards lane. Divide hasn't caught enough, but it'll be Hidden Worlds catching the last player. Regardless, Mandingo fall. Eight to three after the defuse. MBU for like the last few maps, or at least in the last two maps, last round have put up like some really dominating performances on the defense. I'm just afraid of what's going to happen when they do when they do eventually um go to attack, because attack on ascent is uh ten times harder than it is on Haven. And RPI, they're not doing good. They're not doing a bad job. They're like they've got some rounds early at least. They got three rounds to eight, and at first like they didn't even like it was eight to zero at one point on Haven. And then it ended in a 9-3 half, so maybe it's the same thing here. But most, for the most part, MBU have been in control of the early round 
in this matchup so far on the defense. Ooh, RPI jet out very early. He's gonna cloud burst at alarm bot, and no one else has gotten through just yet. Now they will. So there's that space for RPI. They'll get sight for free. There's that lockdown on the prowl for MBU again. Last time it went towards scaffolding. Instantly was broken by a Hunter's Fury. We're looking at the same interaction yet again. Here's a lockdown. Uh, Observer can have the Sova immediately after. Yeah, sir. You know what's up. Hunter's Fury is on its way. Lockdown's gone, but this retake has already started to flow through. Man, Dingo oh. will catch Hidden World nonetheless. That's one down early. BB Chill will trade back to the direction with the Blaze Storm online. Trevi Hambringer both going to find themselves one, but FSD and Diggy have trades. Making it a two on two, and things are settled. And Sight picked up from MBU. It's up to RPI to swing back into this one. And one player is stuck all the way towards A main, and the ult already out of the inventory. Diggy close door, caught oh, by no. Hambringer, and that defuse just gets stuck. But Dingo can't even get into the angle before the round's over. The 3K for the fade. It's a 9 3 score Switching line. Sides hit the half just like it was in map number one jesus christ i mean mm. that's crazy the the trees player actually did get that like ping as well so you you know the fade is like in that general area and it just doesn't seem like uh or yeah it doesn't seem like whoever that was i'm going to assume auntie j auntie j just didn't um sorry ooh did not react on time to that information and so it looked like he was caught off guard by the swing even though again you get you get that ping you kind of expect somebody to swing that position because trees is usually the first position that a lot of attackers like to hide in if they don't close the door first or even if they do close the door first but now we get to see mbu on the attack nice haunt line up there and it does mark out on tj who's playing inside a site okay. but even then he gets one through the smoke no information given to him and he's still better. able to find a first pick he's so better. much better from dice auntie j just knows intuition all they need there is pick that one up certainly they've got a 4.0 gpa <laughs> well now mbu they wanted to commit towards a but a lot of that that first kill Especially um, against their KJ. It's most definitely something that kind of changed their mind up. But it doesn't actually oh, look like they're the uncommitting. Up. Yeah, they're not committing. They're not uncommitting. He's still able to get two? Even though they know? Oh, no. That's crazy. That's crazy. Mendigo finds one. There goes Auntie J with another. And these rounds just keep getting close despite MBU being in such a... Yep. In like such a dominant position, like nine to three, that's still pretty that good for them. Standing. Smoke, they push past or push Getting right in front of it. Diggy doesn't shoot. Oh, that. nice dart. And that's a yeah, that's not a nice dart. That's sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> that is sarcasm. You're right. Maybe chill to walk out of scaffold like a three k. Then Diggy will fall. Had the dart to try to spot the dice player. It goes on the top of the door. You hate to see it. Doesn't clear. And, well, it gets caught out. And, man, MVU on the fence in that one. Auntie J hits a ridiculous shot through a dark cover early into the round. It forces them to scale cat instead. They're caught by two players in their close contact. They have to shoot that zero point instead. So the eyes aren't fully trained on that first angle. But still, Trevi shoots away, too. Opens the door. And they march their way confidently into the A site. Even after he got knifed, or actually almost all of them that pushed that, all of them actually got knifed from the KO. And he's just like, I don't care. Okay, again, through oh, smoke, this, IPJ finds the check. first pick again. We gotta prowling. check the computer. Yeah, we do for sure. Oh no, he's like shooting, he's like, I mean, he's making the educated guess that somebody's playing right behind the smoke. Maybe you have done it before. Oh. And it is the first pick again, Kanichi. Ooh. Finds the trace with something back, takes a jet for a jet. And now, MBU, they're still stalling by me no because of the amount of utility. Hmm? There's no default here. Like, yeah, no. All the contact right now is over towards A. I mean, I guess you can say there's a Kanichi contact over towards Cap, what? but does that really count? FSD walks up into A, trying to see if these players left or not, finds out they didn't, but takes out two regardless. Hamburger's Judge will trade one back, and now MBU gonna look to re-hit this original site once more. Auntie J will get tagged. We'll tag up Hidden World so much, they'll take the frag. They'll find Hambringer as well. It's a 3K picked up from the site player. One through the smoke, the last two straight out in the open. Four to 10. It's RPI, slowly start to bring things back. And once again, I feel like on the attack, it's MBU working one angle, not really sliding off. Is it the force by has gone all right? And looking at pistols here and what could have been a gun round. 
Yeah. Again, like you mentioned, they're not really going for like your default split push. Like they're going for a main, of course, that's default. But another part of a default push towards A is again that that split push towards trees. And they're not necessarily putting any pressure to on that position either. Now we're in a, uh, a save round here from MEU as all of them, I believe all of them have shared it, as I got like a small glimpse at the guns. MBU are kind of splitting up just a little bit. You have two players dying to FSD as they push into that tree's position. Again, it is a it is a gun round for RPI, so they're gonna win most of their gun fights. Sheriff's not really effective unless you get the one tap head shot. Can't find it. But Moses one does find a body remain. shot. Mandingo finds another. And now it's all luck to well, meet me in the one before and he can't find anything. Again, that round fell apart through mid. It's a save round here from MBU, or in that last round from MBU, they took the early gun fights, lost two players because of it. They were just trying to play the map out just a little bit, maybe played it a little bit too fast for my liking in a, in a save round. Uh... Oh. That's what that sound was. It's raining outside. So I apologize if you do hear that through my microphone. Because it is boring. It's like... Okay. First kill in favor of Moses, but it's quickly traded out by Chilla. And you do lose... Yeah. You do lose that sky for a jet. Now you lose your KJ, and so there goes your sentinel utility. But at least watch your flank or watch the aggression towards B main. There goes Harbinger. Find one. And now they have control of this A site, MBU. Yeah, MBU got that plant down. Interesting choice for FSD to walk so far up towards Cat. You should hear those A main players on that angle, but uh, hey, oh, you know, sometimes uh, the, your dog's barking, things are a little loud. All good. Standing ahead. And he goes drone, gonna spot out that player that's towards cats. That flank not gonna be on its what? way. And no one aware of the door players are out so early. So Trevi's gonna be caught in the rear. Hamburger's able to pick up one. We'll throw down that night falls. Tagged both. BB Chill able to come through A May on this long flank. It's picked up one. It's forced a second in the dark cover. And Hamburger's there for the frag. It's a 3k for the fade. It's an 11 5 scoreline for MBU. Things get dicey yet again, but they recover quick. That was scary. Jet was on the, the Meepy was on like the long rotation towards A main, so nobody was positioned well to watch the tree's position, anyways. But even regardless of that, a nice uh, ultimate ability there from Amberger to at least delay some, not delay, uh, at least delay time on a spike because it doesn't knock you off the spike, but it most definitely does disorient you just a little bit. It also marks you, so Meepy feeding off of that info. Also, the player on heaven just being caught out in the open as well past the smoke. So now it's 11 to 5 in favor of MBU. They have a good chance to put themselves on to match point, especially when you look at the economic advantage that they have in this round and gun advantage too. MBU looking to slide their way into this A side of the jointed execute. Prowler has the info on Mandingo, so that gives them that space. Paranoia back from the scaffold player. Auntie J caught out and well, Trevi unblind, so able to find that pick. Menego now from hell getting involved. Spike Trevi planted. full guarded. Oh, Still oh, chilling no. though. FSD picked Maybe. up Drew. Trevi with tr one trade back. FSD's classic gonna have the value there against the Astra. The Kanichi into what is a one on three. Crazy swing for Diggy caught out. FSD cut out. That's two 1v1s and two one 1v1s one for Kanichi Wanner. Make it a one on one when things are settled. Moses close into this door angle. Scaffold oh, no, they... broke. Moses looks late. Kanichi has the frag a one on three clutch from the IGL match themselves. Point. They make it happen. It's a match point for MBU. They can put this one away so early. Kanichi breaking the glass in the garden was the play, most definitely, because it made Moses second guess everything that he knew in that round. He he knew was convinced that Kanichi was in trees and he was. But, I mean, look at the shots here. Boom. Bink. And one then Nano Swarm. This is all you. Yep. Look at this. 
destroys that window, makes him second guess himself. Moses doesn't know where to look. And the indecisiveness just kicked in. But I mean, MBU, they don't kill anyone and they've already found their way inside of sight. Trevi going unnoticed. As Diggy's just in the middle of sight. I don't really know what the hell happened there. That was odd. As a quick take from MBU, it'll be a quick retake from RPI. Cosmic Divides up. Gonna force this team to really commit to these early. Actually, that's a deep Cosmic Divide. So honestly, doesn't really do much for this team. Unless Trevi can get involved B main, which they can. We'll pick up one. Auntie J a trade. Now Rifle picked up. Kenichi so close to the wall. Pick up Moses and we'll pick up Auntie J on the cross. It's two 3Ks back to back for the IGL. It's 30 to 5 and MBU are gonna take this one 2-0. you i mean for the most part at least on haven and you saw it on ascent they were in in control of this matchup from the start they had a really good lead on haven that rpi kind of just like dismantled on their own defenses then we get here to onto ascent and it seems like mbu yeah no mbu even though this isn't their map pick they seemed at home on ascent they seemed very dominant from the start yeah, almost more dominant than their own map pick. Yeah. Not going to lie. I mean, Haven, so very close. I felt like the attack just couldn't quite get figured out from anybody. I mean, you called that better than I think anyone could have. Ended up going to what was three overtimes. What started as an 8-0 lead for MBU, but they finally found that footing yet again after they were able to take that overtime win 15-13 in what was map one. Coming to map two, start things out early. Four spike kind of goes awry for them, so things get a little closer in that second half. But, I mean, footing found rather quickly. Their attacking side looked a lot smoother as well. Uh, I think a lot of that comes to the fact that players like Trevi are just able to walk out, find 2Ks this time to lead them through what should be pretty strict utility close contact. I guess you got to give a little bit of blame to RPI for giving those close contact opportunities to them. And then when everybody falters, when everything's there for the retake, Kenichi Wan or back-to-back is able to hit what is two 3Ks to close out the game. That's all that needs to be said. Oh, that needs to be said. It's a it's a disappointing one as well for RPI because they didn't re that was their own map pick. Keep in mind, yeah. and it just it just didn't seem like they found anything in that matchup. You know, they found like a couple of rounds at least on their attack. Their attack seemed a lot better than it was on Haven at first until MBU started to kind of get used to how they were attacking, and then it just kind of took off from there. Their defenses didn't catch any heat. And so, therefore, MBU takes a series 2-0. to oh, But, I mean, it was a very interesting series to watch, at least on Haven. Yeah. And then on Ascent, we just saw it end out almost abruptly, which is insane to me. <laughs> yeah, crazy stuff for sure. And hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to this MBU team here after the break. We'll look for an interview, and we'll see you here momentarily. As we close out here, I know we're we're slowly approaching on time then, but maybe let's go around the room with everyone here of just what's one thing that we're all excited for for this next upcoming year. I know we touched on our plans and a lot of things, but if anyone had to speak, if you had to speak to just one thing of just what has you excited for for us as a company, for us as the collegiate or college esports space, right? Uh, what's one thing that has all of you guys excited? And maybe we'll start with Mike since our our traditional sports guy, and we'll let you like we'll let Mike speak. <laughs> sure. So uh, I would say many things on the traditional side, but I'll focus on esports. And I'd say the thing that I'm most excited about going forward is after yet another year of us doing a round of events, I'm excited that more schools will understand exactly what we're doing with our regional uh, events and culminating in CECC and getting more schools involved. Uh, I think schools will be more excited to compete in our events because we've established it over the course of a year. And, and I welcome any and all conversations with getting people involved. I, I think for me, I'm most excited about like the schools and conferences, Mike. That's, that's amazing. And that's so exciting. I'm also excited about the brands that we're starting to be able to get involved in this. In our uh, Commissioner's Cup in last May, we had over 14 brands, blue chip brands participating in our event. Barbasol, Microsoft, CDW, Morgan Stanley, New Street, Air Force. Um, 
And so I think brands are, are really starting to get excited about being involved in college esports, and we're offering them a platform that not only gives them, you know, a big event, a big yearly event, but also uh, regular daily programming where they can have exposure in, in front of this audience um, that they, they want to build affinity for with, with their brand. So I'm super excited about seeing the brands get on board and, and help grow the space along with us. A rising tide lifts all boats. And I think that's probably one of our, our mottos here at CSMG and Esports U. We're growing our brand, but at the same time, we're also really growing the college esports space as a whole. And that's our goal for it to be a healthy ecosystem for all parties involved. Yeah, uh, I, I, I agree there. And uh, I guess for me, uh, obviously always, you know, seeing the collegiate esports space elevate, um, uh, coming from a, a competing, this didn't exist when I was competing. And just to see it now in literally within the last five years, probably really come to fruition and start just blossomed out of nowhere and now becoming a space and seeing everyone, schools, players, uh, productions, companies all elevate together has been really, really nice to see. But if I was the most excited for one thing, it would probably be uh, the city where we're going to land for CEC uh, CC23. Um, I'm really excited to know where we're going to be. There's a lot of great cities. I mean, I, I personally would love for it to come to New York, despite whether we got a positive bid or not. I want it to come to New York, but uh, I just think the atmosphere – uh, in New York, when you throw an event here, is just super magical, um, especially in the summertime. And but either way, I'm really excited to see where it lands. Tons of great cities, tons of great opportunities, and um, yeah, who knows? And, and I think that's going to be the most exciting uh, process for me. Absolutely. Um, I won't speak to anything. I think I, I, I'll, I'm filling Paulie's job on this one because Paulie's more a panelist than this one. So, <laughs> um, you know, normally normally Paul is the host, and I, I don't know. I think I, I, me personally, I'll just say something real quick. I'm just excited to keep telling your stories. If you're a student, if you're a program, um, let me know. Let us you know, reach out to us. We just ultimately, at the end of the day, we want to tell your story. And I think that's what has me most excited because now I think we're getting to a point where people know us. People, I hope you guys trust us. And, you know, um, and we just want to keep keep expanding and growing the space. So with that, uh, Polly, I won't make you do the weird thing where you got to toss to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> unless, unless you want to do that. I don't know. Actually, you, you, yeah, you might yeah. have a few way of doing this. You're like, All right. You know, Let's yeah. test it. Yeah. Okay. All right. How do you how do you want to throw throw it yourself here? <laughs> well, that's gonna conclude here the future of collegiate with S uh, CSMG and Esports U. Thank you so much to Angela, Mike Blewett, and Kyler Tandel for hosting our panel. And now back to myself for the day three of the CSMG uh, Coaches and Director Summit 2022. First, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself? Hi, so my name is Caitlin. I'm a part of Farmingdale State College's eSports Club. I am captain of the Valorant Green team. I am a second 
a second semester sophomore at Farmingdale State College, and I'm 19 years old. Okay, do you like Farmingdale so far? Yeah, it's a, it's really great. Uh, the program I'm in is very specialized, and it's not offered um, that often in the East Coast, so it's pretty nice. I enjoy it. And what's your major? My major is aerospace professional pilot degree. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Thank you. So is this your first time on an eSports team? No, so I've been a part of the Valorant team for two semesters, and this is um, my third semester, and it's my first time ever being a captain. Okay, oh, that's awesome. Can you tell me a little bit about what it's like being a captain? So a lot of times I'm organizing the team, making sure everyone is properly set for upcoming games, um, getting scrims for our, our team, and kind of just making sure everyone is there, present, and possible, and able to play the games that we're going to, you know, be participating in. We're participating in two leagues this semester, so it's kind of hectic. Oh, gosh, yeah, definitely. I can see that. How is it different for you as a player versus as a captain? Do you feel a lot of responsibility? I basically have the responsibility of choosing who, you know, really plays, what uh, type of characters everyone's playing, and what positions and roles we are all doing, as well as um, being there not only as a team member, but also being seen as in a leadership role and having that sort of respect there and being able to delegate um, everyone's role in the team. So it's definitely a lot uh, more different, and my voice is most definitely heard. So <laughs> I, I like it. I like being a, uh, a captain. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, what games do you play, or what is your main game? I know you mentioned Valorant. Right. So um, I play Valorant, but um, I started off with Counter-Strike, and I really always have been interested in FPSs. So um, it, that background has always been there. So my transfer onto Valorant was pretty pretty easy. That's cool. What have you done to improve yourself in game over time? So one thing um, for my teams, especially, I have open communication where we're able to really give our constructive criticism without taking offense. And me as a captain, especially being uh, it being my first semester, I find it really important that everyone is able to come to me and communicate like, hey, Kate, I don't know um, how I feel about doing this or uh, I want my voice to be heard about this specific thing. And um, just basically taking into consideration everyone's voice and having that open line of communication is really helpful. And that's something I find really important. Okay. And do you carry that strategy into your everyday life as well, would you say? Yeah. Um, communication is really important to me, um, especially in aviation with crew members. You're always trying to communicate properly and efficiently to get the assigned goal completed. And that works in video games as well as in aviation. So. Um, I feel like it transfers very well, and I put my 100% effort in everything I do. I put 100% in um, the team, the leagues that we're participating in, communicating with um, opposing teams that we might be going against. Um, all those things, I take it really important and can transfer it very well into uh, everyday life. Can you tell me a little bit about what you think about CECC and just competing in general? It's a lot of fun, and um, we're so grateful for the opportunity to participate. And, um, you know, this is something that every single member of our team has said. We've never had the opportunity to really compete in a fashion where it's not only fun, we're able to make friends, talk to other people from different schools. It's just an amazing opportunity and something we would love to participate in the future as well. Yeah, we're really happy you feel that way. <clears throat> when your team is competing with other teams, are there any specific teams or schools that your team kind of looks out for? I think we all have the mentality of it doesn't matter who the other team is. We're going to put 100% effort and we're going to um, maintain our mental. Even if the other team is full of radiance, it's not something we're going to keep in mind because we will be able to beat them. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <Definitely. laughs> yeah, that's a really good mindset. Uh, as you probably know, March is Women's History Month. And you, being a woman in esports, how do you think that has an effect on esports? What does it mean to you to be a woman in esports and as a captain? Just could you talk about that a little bit? Coming into um, being a woman aviator. Ladies and gentlemen, and all who's on the Twitch chat, welcome back to the Esports U Network. We just wrapped up an ECAC Week 5 matchup with Missouri Baptist University and Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, where MBU took it home 2 to 0. So we've got ourselves a special guest on the desk to walk us through their victory here in week five. It's none other than the IGL themselves. It's Kanichi Warner. What is going on, my friend? Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the claps and cheers in chat. 
Yeah, an absolute pleasure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. Fantastic win for you guys. Now, a little birdie told me that you actually were at LAN as a pretty much full collegiate roster. You took it yeah. home. How did that feel? Uh, it felt pretty good. I mean, we knew we were going to win going in. We were pretty confident. Um, I was up there uh, playing my off roll, honestly. Um, just kind of vibing and shooting. I think I killed myself with my molly on brim like three different times. But hey, oh. we got the win at the end of the day. Hey, got the win at the end of the day. It's all that counts. Yep, yep. Super impaired at the win part because we lost uh, mentals down in the drain, honestly. Too real. Too real. Indeed. Too real. Now, imagine the fact that uh, you playing your off rolls and we had you mm. roll swapping here today. Map two, you went uh, to Killjoy and in that first game you were playing the Sova. Talk to me about why those roll swaps are happening and what's got you flexing like that. All right, so... We've had dilemmas in the team in general about roles. Um, I feel like I'm the most flexible player as I played a bunch of tier three tournaments and lands around, um, you know, the Midwest here um, as different roles. And I played every role at a decent, high, decently high level. So I've had I've had over 200 hours on Killjoy. Like I know how to play Killjoy, and so was my main agent right now. So I flexed around, and I used to play Neon on the Ascent, but as of recent, um, we had a game where I dropped one kill in 14 rounds, so we decided to switch it oh. up. <laughs> that that sounds like me when I was there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of exposing myself here, but, uh, you know, um, we made the roll swap. I was a lot more confident. You see me walking through B main sometimes and just getting mm -hmm. two for some reason mid. Somehow we didn't convert that round, but that is okay. Um, I'm just a lot more confident on the agents that have util because i feel like i can play around them more and when i have the util i'm very smart with it i can just use it pretty well i think i dropped 30 first map and 20 something second map so sure. yeah. all right so hi i'm sugar Hello. Co-caster here and um you guys had a pretty like okay so haven was your map pick and i, I want to talk about haven just like a little bit it's going to be only the first question though um, you guys had a pretty impressive defensive half, and then once you guys got on the attack, a lot of things, a lot of unfortunate things happened that allowed RPI to get back into the game. I just, we kind of speculated on the attacking struggles from both teams in our own, like, little analysis segment. I just want your input as a player who was playing inside of that game. Um, so, honestly, the attack half, we just didn't, we didn't sell anything enough. We... We tried defaulting and never broke KJ Util. That was the most imperative part. Mm. Not breaking that Util really let them sit on B. I remember there was one round I was lurking. I think it was at 11-10, and we were hitting A. Unfortunately, lost A. I killed this Killjoy lurking from mid, but there was already one holding CT and three sitting on A. The problem with our attack was we were not creating enough space, nor were we breaking enough on our defaults to even cause a rotate. So anything we ran into was a break wall rather than you know, opening it up. And on their defensive right. half, I think we just played um, more, like, we, we switched up uh, people on each side every round, but we yeah. held everything. And when they were defaulting, they weren't selling anything. They just kind of made space, and we just held 2-2-1 pretty much the whole game. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. It was like, our, like, prediction was like, uh, it was, well, Catenator was like, uh, defaults mainly, and I was just like, there's not, it doesn't feel like there's enough intel gathering onto the site itself, or it doesn't really feel like there's enough commitment to the site pushes. So hopefully, it sounds like we were just like a little bit correct, or even just on the ball at least. So that that is pretty hopeful for us. Um, another question that I had was about your two K, your two three Ks at the end of map number two, of course you know, the 3K at the end to round it off for your team, but also that 1v3 clutch. And I mean, now that was insane, especially the mind games that you were playing with Jet at the end. Yeah, so um, honestly, before going that 1v3, my whole team can confirm, I said to them, I win these, in quote. <laughs> um, and I walked in the tree. My crosshair placement was absolutely terrible, but I hit a kind of good shot on killjoy yeah, like, yep yeah um uh and then the ko was just there i knew he was it was switched because of the way it was and yeah. the jet smoked me off which was honestly the best thing for me because i had room to maneuver around and i know if trees not so my plan was if if window was broken i walk up window and if window is not broken i break it and go back and mm. that was my commitment in my mind and 
the jet fell for it like you know like candy right on the porch he just opened his door and it was a shotgun in his face yeah nah we saw that and i literally commented on it as like towards the end of that round you shot the window and the jet just did not know where to look i yeah, was like she, yo <laughs> she was very lost um she was. it's okay though it happened. in the last I round the last round i misplaced my molly but w- what i did was i placed my alarm bot outside of market so when they walked out normally people go stairs because they're not trying to mess with logs mm-hmm. so i pop my molly he's vulnerable he walks in he dies from the molly and then i walked up near a wall and i waited for this jet to cross because she put her smoke down and i know she used das earlier in ct so I waited for her to cross, killed her, went through the wall, and went back through the wall because I know Omen would commit afterwards to try to get the trade. Mm-hmm. And I delayed his timing a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, nothing I love more begin inside the mines for looks just like that. Two impressive 3Ks to close out what was that map. Two victory and grab you the 2-0 victory in the series. Speaking of that victory, do you have people to shout out, members of the organization to shout out for helping you guys get the win today? Uh, thank you so much to my teammates, obviously. Uh, and uh, my coach for talking to me before the game, um, I've been at a pretty bad mental block in this game for a little bit, but I've decided to rub myself out just a little bit. And I think it's due to my coaches and teammates being so helpful to that. Um, also, thank you to myself for practicing this game and being good. No, I'm just joking. Uh, yeah. But again, yeah. also, thank you for Catinator for the um, Snapchat text and saying, what are you doing? A wake up call even. Well, had to find out. <laughs> uh, a wellness check is what that was. Most definitely. You. Well, I uh, wish you the best, brother. Thank you Good so much. Day. I appreciate it. Brand win, week five win, four one now in the season. Hopefully, that's enough to start to break down that mental block. Best of luck to you in the rest of the season. Thanks for talking to us here tonight. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys as well. Wow, a mental block, but uh, that mental block definitely didn't show any existence in what we're. Those couple of 3Ks, that's the IGL from the team and what led them to yet another victory here in week number five. See how they do continuing on moving forward. We have more contact to cover, content, excuse me, to cover for you here on the Esports U Network. That is our time in the sun here for the ECAC week five. Plenty of more matchups to come. Keep sticking around. Valorant's back on the network on Thursday. Hopefully we'll see you there. But for now, good night. Really a small, a niche type of thing especially women in video games things like that it's just um we're kind of the minority and keeping that in mind um a lot of times you have to represent yourself properly because you are representing such a small community so um i i i feel proud and honored to be a part of um the women's in aviation as well as being a woman in esports and it's a lot of fun and just understanding that us girls are here too and we're as good as everyone else and that we have the opportunity to be a leader in esports um and that we're equal to everyone it's uh really important to keep that in mind because we're here even though you might not see us too often i know you said as captain your voice is heard but when you first started to be a captain did everyone take you seriously being a girl was that respect there or did you struggle mm-hmm. with that so I would say initially when I first got on the team, I was put onto a support role and, you know, everyone knows that women normally play healer when it comes to going into any game. And now I'm, pl- I'm playing more of a controller based or a sentinel, uh, which is very crucial for holding down sites. So by playing that now and then having those semesters in my backpack of of experience everyone has treated me with uh respect and uh, i i would hope it stays that way and either way i demand respect because i i reciprocate that respect to everyone else so it, it's definitely difficult especially for girls starting out um that toxicity is there especially even now whenever i play a game without my team there that toxicity is there just for being a girl but as long as you you know don't have that mindset of them affecting you because you're better than them anyway <laughs> it's it's fine definitely well that's good i'm happy that you're getting respect that you deserve and that's awesome and thank you so much again for your time and i really appreciate it no problem i just wanted to add that our esports team our esports club as well started only with 13 students and two teams in 2019 and now we're up to 19 different teams and over 350 students in um 
to date in 2021, like that progress is there. And even if you have such a small, like if you think that things are so small, realize that a community is there for you, especially being a female in esports. That that community is there for you. Definitely. That's a great way to end it. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for sharing your story. I really appreciate it again and your time. Just thank you overall. That's awesome for no doing problem. what you're doing. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. Of course. I hope you have a good rest of your day. You too. Thanks. Bye. I can't say that. I'll get in trouble. There's one for each game, so teams this weekend. Somebody's going to have to explain to TSA why they're coming home with an extra trophy. Fine. We're fine. This is going to be great. Why is everybody staring at me? I'm not even doing anything yet. Is it because I'm in a suit? It looks nice. It's new. I'm stressing. I'm stressing. It's all right. We win these. We absolutely win these. I've never seen us lose these. I love him. I, think, I don't remember his name. What is going on, everybody? And Oh, are we ready? I'll start over. Okay. What's going on, everybody? We are here at the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup 2022 in Atlanta, Georgia. The players are just now entering the arena for day one. A lot of them had the opportunity to be here yesterday to get jerseys, to get familiar with the area, and to get to know one another. But today, the friendly gloves have to come off, and they are all here. Earlier, I was talking to these guys. This mannequin, when they didn't have anything else set up, I could see it from all the way down there, and I thought it was a person. And I stood there for like five minutes, and I was like, why is he standing like that? And I thought it was like a smooth criminal. I thought somebody was giving us like a Michael Jackson impression, and then it was a mannequin. I was really embarrassed to admit that. Oh my God, that's a lot of people. Hold on, let's go over this one. Window. Let's go over this window. It just keeps going. There's so many people outside. There are so many people outside. We're gonna interview people when they come in. I don't really want to go outside. It looks like it's gonna rain and the suit is new. So, oh, there's Doc Haskell. Hi, Doc. How are you? He, he brings a full notebook with him and like writes notes down. It was pretty insane. He had it yesterday. He's gonna be coming through this metal detector right here. I don't know his name though, but I recognize his hair. Jen. You're Jen. All right, we're gonna interview Jen, who's supporting Kennesaw. I'm gonna ask you like, a couple of very simple questions. Okay. Um, are we ready? All right, great. College. I really like Georgia College's uh, color scheme. It's just red, white, and blue. I think. But I think they did it in a really clever way. Mineral area wearing hoodies, even though it is 75 degrees outside here in Atlanta, Georgia. Absolute legends. If only Nick could hear you. Nick, come back. If he's over 100 feet away, he can't. You were whispering something, and he started smiling. I'm like, are you whispering? Oh, yeah, because he's, he's got his headphone in if we're close enough. But Bless you. Gesundheit. Gesundheit again. You're welcome. Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go find him. Oh, oh, there he is. Can't hear me. <laughs> oh my! Oh, okay, okay. Real, real stuff is starting. Real stuff. Competitive integrity needs to be upheld. We gotta get out of here. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to get in trouble. I'm really. I, I get really embarrassed when I get yelled at. Thirty. Okay. Wow, it's not ten thirty yet. It's only like barely ten. <laughs> Woo!